Guys, welcome to the Colt Bros live stream on Friends with Davey. We are going to be talking about some really interesting stuff tonight. Uh, but first, I want to introduce all of our guests and even a special guest. Y'all, please say hello to Bryce, Chad, and special surprise guest, Lindsay. How y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay wasn't even so supposed good. to be here, but when she found out what we were talking about... <laughs> <laughs> she insisted that uh, that we include her in this one, and we were happy to do it. You weren't. You were actually working your real job yes. with Crazy Pretty. My real job today. Raced yes. home from a modeling gig so that you could uh, <laughs> roast Miss Holly McLean, the mommy answer lady. Oh my God! The last episode yeah. was so intense. Uh, I have never <laughs> been more furious on a podcast episode than I was in the last one that Bryce and I did together. And I had to get y'all's opinion on some of these, these clips from the, I don't even know what to call it. Bryce, is it a podcast? Is it just a video? What would you call it? Like, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a YouTube channel slash podcast. I, I, it's I just her review cast. on the shiny, happy people <laughs> documentary, right? Like that, that's pretty to, much what it is. You know, she's got some stuff she's tried to sell, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I like uh, it to verbal diarrhea. Yeah, that, I mean that's a that's a fair way to put it. Yeah. Now uh, let's, she's, she's just she's very well spoken, Chad. It's just you know it's a bow on a turd. I wouldn't say she's well spoken. She just talks slowly and like enunciates well. That's a. I'd say it. everything else is insane. I'd say she's outspoken, but I don't know by whom. Now, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, da -dum -dum yeah. well, I... this is the craziest part about the whole thing. And, and I mean, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong here, because Lindsay, I'm pretty sure you've not maybe not had interactions with her, but you were already aware of her and, and Chad as well. Um, yeah. She didn't even she wasn't even a part of the cult. She went to one basic seminar. She has a bunch of kids. She has a whole crew of children, like nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like nine kids. Yep. But was never even in the shiny, happy people cult. Just needed to get her opinion out there about the documentary. Well, because she knows a hit piece when she sees one. Yes. That was one of the famous quotes from her review mm -hmm. of the documentary was, this was really just a hit piece. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. question I asked was, a hit on who? A hit on Bill uh -huh. Gothard? A hit on the cult? A hit on the Duggars? A hit on Josh Duggar? Like, who... Yep. Who was the subject of the hit piece? I I really don't know what she's channel. referring to there. Maybe the learning <laughs> channel could be. Yeah. That to hear um, her talk, it's is a hit against truth, justice, and the American way. Uh, what do we have against <laughs> Superman? Basically, you know, it's right. just like just yeah. everything. You, you're mm -hmm. you're just attacking good Christian principles here. Shiny happy yes, people document. That really is. Video. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Where and, do I, and I mean, where's that form? Victim blaming was out of control. I mean, oh, that, that was 90% of what she had to say. The victim blaming is out of control more than people even understand how yeah. out of control she is. Mm -hmm. It's She is victim blaming and really like mentally abusing people right now yeah, with some I of agree. the rhetoric that she is saying to survivors of IBLP, ATI, Bill Gothard and Bill Gothard's abuse and harassment because Absolutely. she doesn't want to own what the actual truth is, but how would she know? She's never been involved in any of this and she doesn't want to hear the hard facts. Right. She wants to make her own narrative. And this is the problem with Christian nationalism right now is that everyone wants to create their own narrative based on their religious faith, but completely ignore facts. Yep. Facts. And that's, that's exactly what it was over and over every single clip we watched. It was just like, you're spinning a narrative here. Mm -hmm. um you're you're ignoring what the documentary was actually saying and just creating your own reality um which i, I mean you know every everyone is entitled to their own opinion but once you start attacking victims the way that she has that's where i think the line gets very clearly drawn um i mean and if i could add to that yeah, go ahead, Chad, please. Yeah, so a major part of her narrative was she felt like Ginger Duggar was being exploited in the documentary uh, by having her narrative 
um, you know, not match with what she said in her book. And she very clearly pointed out, she was just like, I read Ginger's book and it has nothing to do with how Ginger, you know, plays such a part in the docuseries. Except Ginger wasn't the Duggar who was in the docuseries. Correct. That was Jill. Yeah. And she repeatedly <laughs> misidentifies Jill as Ginger Duggar. When she made that video, Jill's book had not even been written yet. Uh -huh. So if she can't get the basic facts of who is in the docuseries right, why mm -hmm. the hell should we listen to her about anything else she has to say about the docuseries? The funny part about that is she's trying to create a counter docuseries, which yes. is just hilarious to me yes. because I'm like, okay, well, you know, again, you have trouble with basic reality, including, you know, like actual facts that are printed on the screen. So, yeah, yeah, you're the perfect person to be heading this up, Miss. I only went to one basic <laughs> seminar, and I can't see past the end of my nose, apparently. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. perfect. Oh, well at said, no man. point did she retract that or acknowledge it, except maybe in the in the little blurb underneath the video, say, oops, oh, uh, the description? It, was, it was Jill, actually. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even look at that, yeah. so I'm, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know if she yeah. did, like, retract it or correct it or, or whatever. Here, here's the really funny thing, Chad, and I don't. I don't have the most current numbers on this, but to your point that she's trying to do her own documentary, um, essentially refuting the shiny happy people documentary, um, she wants to raise three hundred thousand uh, dollars <laughs> for you know purposes of filming the documentary. I believe so far yeah. she's raised twenty five hundred, um, well, which is still disconcerting. Oh, it's more than that now. Yeah. How much is it now? I my she... go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Chad. No, no, no. You're fine, Chad. You probably are more in it on the up and now than I am. So she claims that she uh, has received an outside donation outside of her little pseudo GoFundMe thing, which, by the way, you can submit prayers to as well, in addition oh, to uh, money. So, you know, that helps, I guess. Uh, <laughs> one one, one, equals one prayer. prayer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but she claims outside. <laughs> <laughs> but she claims outside of that that uh, she has also gotten a donation of $15,000. Now, I don't know of too many people who still support IBLP and or Bill Gothard who have $15,000 outside of Bill Gothard himself. Uh -huh. uh, so, you know, I'm just letting my imagination run wild on that one. But yes, uh, I think the grand total at this point is somewhere around $17,000 to $18,000 if what she says is true, which you may notice is still less than 10% of what she needs to make this damn series. <laughs> but still way too much, in my opinion. Yeah. There's no Agreed. way she should have raised that amount of money. She shouldn't mm -hmm. have raised more than a couple dollars, in my opinion. But You know what, though, Dave? I don't think that's hard to do. I don't think true. in the temperature, temperature of our country right now with religion, especially Christianity, I don't think that's very hard to do at all. Look at what Trump's doing. All he yeah. has to do is like, eh, and then they send him $20. Everybody's sending him $20. So, you know, oh, no, this is a total attack on Christianity. Like, everybody help me, you know, write my slander, shiny slander piece. Doesn't even roll off the tongue. You know, at least shiny. Happy yeah, people, yeah, that was the name of it, right? Shiny, happy slander. Shiny slander? No, it's just shiny slander. Shiny it's like, slander? So slander. I'm like, what? You Come on. It wasn't creativity one of Bill Gothard's uh, character qualities. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just feeling like there's no creativity here. Shiny slander. I've literally said shiny slather. I can't even tell you how many times because my brain is just like. Yeah, yeah. Now, that's like, a different. Anyway. That, that's a that's a different documentary. All shiny slather. <laughs> shiny slather. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I I bought four shiny slathers from the group website. <laughs> when, when the you know, shiny slather. I'm gonna open my legs. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah <laughs> if anybody yeah. wants to send twenty dollars to the uh, Bryce, the brother mm -hmm. answer man, uh, I'm certified brother, brother answer answer man. Answer man. <laughs> so I'll take, well, you're a dude as priest as well, so you're qualified. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely qualified, Bryce. Um, the, here's wow. here's the other thing. So, really, all Bryce and I reviewed was uh, the the review that she did on mm -hmm. the shiny happy people shiny happy people documentary. However, she has like a series of articles that she's published as a certified parent educator. Um, mm -hmm. It basically instructing parents how to raise their children, and so we're going to take a look at that as well, which is. Cool insane Lindsay, you sent me a bunch of screenshots and that's actually what we're going to be looking at uh, cool. but as i'm reading through this because i hadn't looked into it at all I, ne mm -hmm. I never went to her any of her social media channels her website her youtube i didn't go to any of her you know public information because i didn't want to give it any traffic clicks hits whatever right. you know um but when you sent me that stuff i was just like good lord this woman really is insane 
uh, it's it's just it's wild what she's promoting, especially with everything that's been happening um, in, in some of these, you know, um, what what do you want to call them? Like uh, children's training centers or, or you know corrective schools. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's been a series of lawsuits, arrests, especially out in Utah with a bunch of um you know fundamentalist mormons and she's actively promoting this stuff that other people are getting arrested for right now yeah like that's nuts that's crazy that's child abuse it really really is and, and so we'll take a look at that as well um yeah. i did want to say hello to everybody in the chat uh sorry we're already 10 minutes in before i said hi to anyone but hello <laughs> welcome uh super chats are always welcome certainly not required Send your questions, your comments through the live chat, and uh, and we will get to as many of y'all as we can. But we do have a lot of ground to cover. Um, Bryce, do you want to start with? Do we want to start with uh, just kind of rehashing some of the clips that we already reviewed, or do we want to get into um, her? I guess educational stuff first. I'm thinking the clips, right? Clips. Let's do clips. Clips. Let's do clips first. This first one is my favorite, Lindsay, and I know. Uh, you're going to have an aneurysm just watching it. Um, <laughs> That's what you're actually in it. Lindsay, you're actually in this clip oh. too. Oh, you great. Are in this clip. Yeah. Wow. I'm did she get a it. release form? <laughs> 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 residuals, ma'am. Oh, here we go. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and play this one. Um, no and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to play it all the way through. There's, uh, there's, uh, I've already uh, figured out the pause place. And then, Lindsay, cool. I'm going to go straight to you. And then we'll get Chad and Bryce's <laughs> opinion as well. So here we go. Here now, it if you watch Shiny Happy People, you'll see that the whole so-called documentary has ominous music in the background. It highlights people who believe they were harmed by their interaction with Christianity and IBLP and focuses on some of the accusations of misconduct by Bill Gothard, which may or may not be true. Some of his actions may have been misinterpreted and some may not. Though the accusers tried to sue Gothard in court, all charges were eventually dropped and dismissed by the accusers and Gothard unsuccessfully tried to counter sue to prove his innocence. There we go. Oh, Lindsay, he what unsuccessfully counter sued? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. that's good. At least she got that fact right. Right. Um, I first am just going to talk about her cadence, mm -hmm. her control, mm -hmm. and her passive aggressive manipulative tone. Yep. She is a training center wife. Mm -hmm. Wanna be wife. Yeah. Wanna be. Wanna be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there, there is a way in which she controls the way that she speaks. So that she is effective in her communication, if that doesn't trigger all three of us, mm -hmm. um, you know, with her power of precision and shit. But there's there is such a a, a way in which she talks about this so-called documentary. Yes. I don't even think she Googled documentary and what that means. But again, she's already so biased. There is not really a lot that I can say because for the, with this one, simply because this is what she feels. This is how she feels about everything. Right. Yep. Yeah, yeah I, I love what you said about the cadence. It sounds like, you know, we have Michelle Duggar at home, you know, and we got mm -hmm. we picked up at the Dollar Tree. The like, it's exactly of Michelle Duggar. Yeah. Or team. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> because she doesn't have like she doesn't have like the high pitched like young voice. Mm -hmm. She's a little more, you know, she's a confirmed good Christian mom. And so she's got a little more strength to the way that she talks. But or maybe her natural voice is a just little so deep. bit. Of. Maybe she sounds yeah, like I mean, me with her voice, natural but... voice, you know? <laughs> no, I am all I mean, I voice. <laughs> <laughs> Holly um, I mean, I, I spoke in a really sing songy high voice. Uh, Chad's heard it before. Brandon might remember it. I don't even know. I've but, purged um, it. Purged it. Yeah. So, um, like when I was 18, I mean, my voice was, was high and soft and floaty. You know, and then when I finally found who the hell I was, like my voice got a lot more just I'm I'm a deeper voiced girl. But um, I feel like the the way that she communicates mm -hmm. is so funny, Christian mom. Very like, much so. I would not cross that woman if she was my mother. And, you know, I <laughs> I kind of wouldn't would be curious to see what her kids actually thought if she wasn't in a room. Yeah. Given Once they're out of the house are. and and safe from her uh -huh. craziness, 
yeah, what their take on harmed. the mommy answer lady is. Uh, yeah. The the part that got me, um, and and when Bryce and I recorded the original episode, I, I mean, there's a part yeah. where my eyes just, what are you talking about? Where it was the uh, the behavior from Gothard that may have just been misinterpreted or misunderstood. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, it, it, like that part right there. Uh, more than anything else that she had to say just completely floored me. Uh, She's in complete denial, Davey. Yes. She refuses yes. to believe that what I went through actually mm -hmm. happened. Right. She's no better than other people that have come after me and judged me and told mm -hmm. me that I was wrong and tried to absolutely gaslight me from the abuse that I suffered. And Holly McLean, I know you will watch this. You are so wrong in your judgment. Your judgment is so skewed, warped, and twisted because you choose to follow a Bible that subscribes to rules that are okay with ignoring abuse. Mm -hmm. Completely thing... denies truth when people are harmed. Yep. And I know that that's not Jesus' teachings. Mm -hmm. We are, I like, I may not practice as a Christian anymore, but I sure know the teachings. And I know that this type of behavior from her is so egregious to God that you would deny a little one that has suffered at the hands mm -hmm. of people who have lied and cheated and groomed and stolen innocence and youth. And, you know, like my childhood and my teenage years, Bill Gothard wasn't in the room, but his teaching stole those years from us. Mm -hmm. And then I get into his hands and I have to deal with him as he grooms and abuses me. Mm -hmm. And if she doesn't understand the word abuse, maybe see a therapist. Yeah. Because counseling, I don't think that there, you don't have therapy. You don't have the letters behind your name. So we know that you do not actually have a degree. So this counseling thing that she does, I don't know who certified you or legally verified that you are certified, whatever this is, to be able to teach parents how to train their children. But I have a feeling given that you are willing to ignore the abuses that all of us have uh, exposed of Bill and IBLP, I have a feeling that you would deny the abuses that have happened either to your own children or other people in your church or people that you have uh, pose supposedly trained how to train their children. You know, it, it's, it's also just crazy to me that it's, you know, it's all just a misunderstanding about Bill's behavior when there are dozens of Something. women that have come forward about that. Oh, so they all misunderstood Bill Gothard's behavior? Apparently That's he is crazy. sinless and blameless. Yeah. Oh. And Lindsay, I know for, okay. uh, so I think Lindsay was right when she said that she sounds like a training center mom and, and you're right. I think she would really, she thinks in her head that she would really like to have been a training center mom or like her, her husband would have been a director and she would have been like in this authoritarian thing. But after, if you watch her little thing where she talks about um, how she couldn't invite her friend over anymore because of how they behaved is like they would have mm -hmm. uh, they would have judged you. I don't think I don't think Holly could has the standards necessary to survive in a training center. I think they absolutely would have been like, oh, you're too worldly. Yeah, she wants she one fast. leg in the world and one leg in this like fundamentalism. Like yeah. is she there's probably a little more fame and fabulousness and people that are willing to ogle over what she says and look up to her. But then out in the real world side, it's like, whoa, you're a little too conservative and a little too strict. So where do you belong? You're going to go where you're a little more idolized. Mm -hmm. Chad, I, I wanna, wanna hark, yeah, I want to harken back a little bit to uh, what, what Lizzie was saying about the uh, dozens of people, you know, who have spoken out and everything, how she's gaslighting them. Um, I know for a fact, and I've heard from survivors who have had this woman personally contact them. And they've ha they've been gaslit by her. They've mm -hmm. had their questions, or they've had their experiences questioned, everything. And this is re-traumatizing people wow. who have been through horrible things. This woman, in an attempt to hitch her wagon to this failed institution and this deplorable failed cult leader, is re-traumatizing people so that she can get some views and she can make a name for herself. Wow. And if she truly is a believer that feels like her beliefs are being questioned. If she is joining her, if she is allying herself with this level of abuse, and if she is denying the experiences of the people who have suffered actual harm, then 
that to me is the most egregious thing about this so far. I get that there are still people that support IBLP. Hell, I'm related to a lot of them, and I don't give them the time of day. But this woman has gone beyond the pale in re-traumatizing and in questioning the harm that this has done. That's crazy, it's man. I, I knew she reached out to people. I didn't realize that she was reaching out and and questioning their experience or challenging yes. their experience or denying their experience, whatever the case yeah. may be. I, I mean, that's just heinous and evil, dude. That's craziness. Uh, you know, it's this disgusting. Lady, it's it absolutely deplorable. I mean, where mm -hmm. is your conscience? Where is your moral compass? Because yep. I don't see one. I see you as another harasser that yep. only piles more trauma onto an abuse victim who all we want is for people to finally believe us. Mm -hmm. I look, Holly McLean, I still sleep at night. This woman is not keeping me up at night because Good. I have yeah. found my peace and I know my freaking strength, but I am so disheartened and heartbroken for the people that she has reached out to because it's just egregious. Like yeah. I, who do you think you are? And let's, let's be fair too. like woman on woman crime. Mm -hmm. Like it makes me even more enraged that we have a woman in the church who mm -hmm. is also saying, sorry, ladies, it's really up to the patriarchy and we got to support the men. Yeah. We have fought this our entire lives. For those of us who have survived this bullshit, we have fought our entire lives to finally have a voice. And now we have a woman who thinks that she can come for us and what tell us that there's a different narrative. Girl, mm -hmm. we know the narrative. We know the truth. So enjoy you your the shiny slander. Yeah. You, know? you you lived this narrative that she is preaching. Yeah. Yeah. You, that you know? apparently and doesn't exist. The the wild thing to me is that yeah, she she's identifying and, and positioning herself as essentially a Christian leader or Christian yeah. teacher, let's say. Mm -hmm. Um counselor. And yeah, or educator. Uh I don't think she can oh, yeah. use counselor. Uh she's a certified parent educator, which who the it's hell knows what that means? How I, mean, I looked that up. I, I really want to see the credentials. I want to see the yeah, certificate. I don't think I think you could probably get one online. Oh, for you know what? A I have a certificate. Bucks. Oh, shut up. I have well, a certificate. Bryce is a Dudas priest, you know? Like, uh, but and I got a, it from and IBLP. From I'm a certified, the yeah. seminar. I'm yeah. a certified storyteller. Yeah. But I also went to the counseling seminar. You know who else is a as a family educator? Bill Gothard. Our mothers. Oh. Our is mothers he really? are family. Did he have that certification? Well, no, no. But oh, okay. he, he probably created oh, he gave it to himself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. <laughs> gave himself a doctorate from Verity he College. He took his own little wisdom booklet test at the He has a general's thing. uniform. He <laughs> yeah. has a general's uniform. Oh, that's right. For the uh for Alert Academy, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. What a nerd. That oh, man has God. never repelled in his life, and neither have don't, I. Don't don't put him <laughs> in with the nerds, sir. That don't be don't. It's don't, not polite. Don't taint that. <laughs> Us nerds, taint. we would not allow him in. He's not what a loser! Here. How about that? What a loser! <laughs> put on some glasses here. first, sir, and then you can join our group. <laughs> dyes his hair. If you're gonna dye your hair, to be a nerd. It's gotta be like thing. blue or green. But it can't oh be my just... god! That blue black. Oh how Oh, here's nice. uh, here's Bryce's sister. Her point. Uh, I mean, exactly what we're saying. My point is, anyone can call themselves a parenting expert. It's a ridiculous label unless you actually have training. And even in a situation like this, Bryce's sister, if you have the training and you are still promoting harmful ideas, uh, harmful tactics, what? And we're gonna get into that because. What she is promoting is, like Lindsay said, it's abuse, flat out abuse. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll get into that because I just it it it, it blew my mind seeing the original cl clips that that Bryce and I watched, right? And then all over again, I was just like, where does the who who hurts you, Holly McLean? I I almost feel a little Hans bit. Gruber bad for her because i'm sure she absolutely went through it when yeah. she was a, a a child or an adolescent or a young adult whatever i'm sure she's been through her own fair share yeah. of extreme trauma mm -hmm. and has been conditioned to oh, now sure. toe the line with all the indoctrination mm -hmm. and the belief system because yep. genuinely the one yep. thing i can say about holly is she's genuine in what she believes and I, it's sad, but she, I really do think she believes it. Why in the world would you pick up right. this mantle 
You know, this is not something that anyone else has picked up. I don't see Bill Gothard making it, although I don't uh, deny that I have a suspicion that his grubby hands are involved in it somehow, if it's uh, via of Gothard. They're promoting, um, yeah, they're promoting call, you know, this shiny standard thing. Of they're, course I they mean, are. Heavily. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't yeah. they? Alfred. Yeah. Good old I, Alfred. I, I, have, uh, I have permission from Bryce's sister. My sister's name is Erin, and she's Hi, wonderful. Aaron. And I love her very much. <laughs> And she was at I our our live uh, recording, uh, the live show that we did in Austin as well, which was mm -hmm. super cool. Um, but at any rate, uh, that Lindsay was also a part of, as a matter of fact. Um, so I've got a couple more clips here. Uh, I'm going to, Bryce, which one should I play next? We did not discuss which one you should play next, but uh, right. hang on one moment. Hang on. Uh, do, uh, do the number seven. We'll number seven. Uh but it doesn't have a number on it. Cool. Hang on. I can tell you. <laughs> okay. Sweet. It's the one with the stock photo. Uh, the, I'm going to play this one. Thumbnail. I'm going to play this who one. Get deeply one. into the IBLP concepts. The concepts themselves are good ones. Mm. But the application can cause problems when each thing is taken to an extreme. Mm. Something I have to add here. She and most of the people involved in the IBLP are very sincere and wanting to do the right thing and to raise their children in a godly Christian way. They truly want to do the best for them. They love their children with all their hearts and they work very hard to be the best parents they can be. I'm going to stop it right there. Uh, but we, we couldn't get some ATI families to actually pose in for this. We had to get all crazy, stock right? video. Like, Not I'm to sorry. mention women in tank tops. Yeah, for shame. Like the immodesty levels here, like yeah. you're not, sorry, you're already slandering your own slandery show. Mm -hmm. Like you are not, no, you're not holding on to this the right way. I, right? I, I feel defrauded. You <laughs> Chad, you saw a shoulder and just can't contain yourself and your thoughts now. <laughs> Chad has hey, to I'm leave gonna, the room. I'm going to need 30 seconds, guys. <laughs> Go get you some, uh, get you some shiny, some shiny smear, slather. slander, slather, slap. Yeah. Get Turn yourself some shiny shower. slather. Um, I don't think, I don't think, you know, someone like this, I, I, and now I'm going to take this in a very, a slightly technical, different Do way of breaking things. This woman has no idea what it takes to make a documentary. Okay. No. She has, you know, yeah. okay. She can grab some stock footage and she can throw some video, some uh, audio behind it and she can do some transitions and she can write a script, but to actually produce, and I know this because I've, been involved in productions i was involved in a documentary i'm a professional photographer this is a this is this is big huge lots of work lots of money if you want it to look good she does <laughs> have a commitment from a production money. company she does a christian one yes therefore well, yes. therefore it won't get skewed yeah she has a production company and Who's all their either? um and, and, and everything they produce so far, all conspiracy theory uh, videos literally like everything is a here's what's really happening in the world type thing so you know that they're legit yeah <laughs> lizard people am i right <laughs> sure. oh, close, I, did wanna, close. <laughs> I also wanted to clarify something real quick and Lindsay, mm -hmm. uh you're gonna love this part um okay <laughs> so the the little doll that looks like bryce yes. in the yes. background mm -hmm. yeah that's actually uh matt walsh Mm -hmm. uh, very but, popular conservative commentator. Uh, Lindsay, I will not tolerate any slander a, from you on this. I will not tolerate any of it. But why is he a bulldog or a, he looks like two drumsticks <laughs> put baby. together? What's happening? I think it I think it's supposed to be a baby. And it just looks like a bulldog. It looks like everybody, a bulldog. I know. Everybody in uh, chat, do a thumbs up if you want like a corgi with my face longer here. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. It's probably expensive. It Kind of does like look 80, like 100 bucks. But we'll, we'll see if we can do that. But yeah. what is like out of all of the things she bought from the home goods yes. slash Michael store? Yes. What is that the, it's one? So aggressive. That's, it's like it, it's just it's an like, altar. Like, like she has an altar. She has made a I don't get an it. idol yeah. unto Matt Walsh. It. And it is it. in violation of the Ten Commandments. I'm surprised it wasn't Bill Gothard. Right. You're standing up for okay, well that, right now. This, this brings up an this brings up an interesting theological point. What breed of dog would Bill Gothard be? Oh. Chihuahua? Probably. No, no, no. no. <laughs> We're like, no. I mean they're loud and annoying. I think <laughs> he would be annoying, a bird. Though. He would just be a bird. He'd be an African gray. <laughs> 
That's what Bill Gothard would be. He just parrots and repeats what he's already heard. Oh, that's not too. That's not too shabby. And, and he'd still fail at being a breed of dog, which yeah would be very. <laughs> I, I like. I like. <laughs> I like the idea of like a French bulldog. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, um, we have to come I've, back to that one. I've yes. got another clip. I've got one. I've got Gizzy one other clip here. Anyway, um, <laughs> oh, and uh, I want to. I want to hear y'all's thoughts on this one too. So, All right. let's, and let's take how many people have begun a life full of sexual deviant behavior, and were not raised in a large Christian IBLP family? Hmm. Lots. So those who point to IBLP or the Duggars or Christianity as the culprit, as this so-called documentary did, need only to look at those who have the same problems and were not involved with any of that. I would suggest that before you make a judgment about IBLP or the Duggars family, you don't just listen to hit pieces like shiny happy people or interviews with hosts who already have a biased attitude. <laughs> Why I'm, does she I'm, move I'm, like she still has the clothes hanger in her clothes? <laughs> I'm so disappointed that our faces weren't on there, Davey. I know, right? Oh, Lindsay had to bust out the fan. <laughs> I am on fire right now. Oh my lance. I wish I had the Whoa. I wish I had the ability to do live effects. Oh. I would have like lightning. <laughs> I feel like I'm being blown off screen. It's like <laughs> yeah. I, God, just... I took that in the whole wrong way, Chad. This yeah. uh, the 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 concept of they they're applying these principles in the extreme. I said it on the episode, Lindsay. That was the whole point. The whole point was to apply they're this good as principles they're as great. possible. Yeah, yeah. Have you lived them, Holly McLean? No. From the age of eight, Holly McLean, were you stuck in a cage called your house mm -hmm. with your parents telling you? Purity culture is the only way. Education is only the advanced training institute with the wisdom booklets. Have you only had a wisdom booklet education? If you don't have that, you can't talk. Yes. You have no right to speak about mm -hmm. how this affected everybody else because you've been completely unaffected by it. Yeah, that's that is it right there. <laughs> and so bam. Wait, wait. Um, I, just need to, I just need to do a quick check. Raise your hands no if you were in the cult. Idea. Oh. Oh, okay. So we can talk. Okay. So we're yeah. qualified. It's crazy, right? It's crazy that you know we're what? discussing she, it. I'm a certified like, survivor. I was at the Southern Baptist Convention and, you know, their principles are great. I'd be like, you know what, boo? You do you. Because sure. you know what? I wasn't raised as a Southern Baptist. Right. I can't profess to know. But if you were to say, I was abused by a pastor with the, within, the, within the Southern Baptist community, I'd be like, girl, come with us. We support you. I wouldn't be like, you know what? I think you need to go back to that pastor and be like, I'm sorry, I'm slandering you. You mm -hmm. know what? Everybody else who's ever said this is probably wrong. And you really need to get back under your authority because these principles are great. Yeah. I would not gaslight other people. She's literally gaslighting as a counselor or whatever you said her name now is like her title. Educator. She is, yeah. Educator or whatever. Um, she's gaslighting people. Mm -hmm. And if so she had this, an ounce of education, yeah. she would know that and she would stop immediately. This is a strategy, too, that I've started seeing from IBLP and uh, and people like Alfred and what have you. Because I actually had a conversation with an IBLP worker not too long ago where their narrative of how the ATI program came into being was that there were just some families who saw the um value of the wisdom book list and they decided among them you know, in and of themselves without any outside interference from iblp or anything to create a homeschool curriculum out of them and uh you know teach your kids exclusively from them it wasn't like iblp planned it they just did that you know mm. it was just a thing that they did and it became a beautiful thing but now it's time has passed and you know they're moving on to other stuff so the whole narrative and this is something that she holly is actively promoting it wasn't that they structured this authoritarian system to benefit iblp and bill gothard personally which they totally did because everything ultimately ended up benefiting them yep. it wasn't that they did that it was that some families just went a little bit too far right. and took it a little too seriously when all of us in this room can tell you right now there was no such thing as taking it too seriously nope. 
Two nope. seriously was the default. If you did not believe in authority, you were not IDLP. If you did not believe in the 49 character qualities and their operational definitions that had nothing to do with what they actually mean, then you weren't IDLP. You had yep. to be a true believer or you were out. And the more extreme, the better, Chad. Uh, oh, you were, it, you, you know. were, you rise in stature. Yes. You mm -hmm. rise in the ranks, the stricter you are. Absolutely. There, there was yeah, a model family. Clip. Uh, that that Bryce and I listened to, and it was basically her saying, you know, everything seemed really good except the umbrella of authority concept. That seemed like it could potentially lead to some problems. And I'm like, dude, that was the the basis for all of it. That Does permeated it everything. Like it could be a problem, yeah. Holly. Does it seem well, it? And her it primary is. exposure to IBLP was with a family friend that they stopped hanging out with because they were. Yeah. Too far gone, too right. extreme. But, but this is definitely a hit piece. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But this is a hit piece, and the principles are actually good. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah it's just piece. it's insane. Okay, is, I wanna, you, you know what laughable. she is? She, she is she is a dollar store Tom Hagen. That's what this is right here. She's fixing everything. She's from outside of the family, but you know what? She's over there just softly going like, nah, 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 nah. so you know, and whispering in people's ears. Yeah. And really traumatizing people. I mean, we know um, her spiritual gift is probably a prophet, but like, what house is she in at Hogwarts? Oh, I'm asking the real questions. Slytherin? Would it be Slytherin? You don't. You don't, don't I don't know. I don't know, I don't know anything about it. Yeah. <laughs> Mordor. Right. Mordor. Mordor. Yes. Mordor. Yeah, just Mordor. I'm, I have Sauron. Oh wait, that's Lord of the Rings. I do know that one. Yeah. No, I do don't know pretend that. like you're if a you just nerd. Came alive. Wait, I know, know Lord of the Rings. I watched. All right, that. come over. Come over, we'll watch it back to back. Gonna, oh, yeah, right name, I'll do it right name now. three rings. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, if you love Lord of the Rings so much. <laughs> Look, I am not Stephen Colbert, sir. Oh my god. Uh okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep playing this clip uh because it, it does it does continue. Um yeah, so bring it. Here we go. And you don't Come just on. listen to someone who has a one-sided opinion about it all. Instead, read <laughs> up on it from both sides and learn more. One of the problems with the way things are portrayed in the media is that things are usually skewed, sensationalized, and biased one way or the other. Yeah. In the end, I believe IBLP has some good concepts when applied in moderation, that the Duggar parents did their best and worked hard to raise a good Christian family and be a good witness, and that those who <laughs> see it as all bad or all good are not looking at the whole picture. Mm. Oh, go home, Holly. <laughs> you're drunk oh, you're, not. you're at home you're doing this She's from home. Home. oh freaking heck <laughs> i just the, the the like the way it starts don't listen to one person's opinion oh i'm listen sorry to holly both sides and then <laughs> deny one of them their truth yeah, thank you let's see yes yeah it's a beautiful thing oh especially when you do it in moderation yeah, because that's the only way you come to the truth. Because the media. I'm gonna need you to pitch up just a little bit oh, there, Lindsay. The media. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here, here's the thing. Okay, so shiny happy people, right? They took actual footage, and one of the things I appreciate about the docu series was everything that me, Lindsay, or any of the survivors said was immediately backed up with documentation or a clip, you know, backing up what we said. In the second episode, they literally show a little boy being brought up on stage and physically yes. abused in front of people yes. who are laughing and cheering they it laugh. on. They laugh. Absolutely. Like, and it's played completely straight. And how are you going to say that this is a one-sided hit piece? The side is on the screen. That yep. is what they chose to put on video for mm -hmm. families to take, I don't know, some kind of lesson from. Mm -hmm. So and if yeah, it's a I hit mean, piece, right. guess who was getting hit? Davy, Bryce, Chad, yep. Lindsay. That's the mm -hmm. hit the kid here, on stage. Honey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and our little little buddy on stage. Or who the is, who doll that Michael all? and Debbie Pearl demonstrated well, with a yeah. What was it they were using? Like a I think it was like a was mini a blind stick? rod. I think it was a glue stick. Oh, it was a glue stick? No, I could be wrong. No, a glue stick no? broke like I don't know what it was, but it was it. it was clearly something that they couldn't demonstrate on an actual person because it would have hurt too much. We had a three foot dowel rod. 
Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been. And I don't, and there. I don't even know what the purpose of that dowel rod is in theory. Uh, something to do with quilting, but in practice, it was mainly wielded like a sword. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you can buy them at most homeschool conventions. Ooh. Yeah, wasn't oh, yeah. I'm I'm not I can't speak to full truth of this, Chad. You might, but wasn't there one of the discipline books that actually came with a strap? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't, I don't recall I, one. I do know yeah, that probably. they sold paddles with holes drilled in them at yes. some of the homeschool conferences. Yeah, for the sure. wiffle paddles. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I remember seeing those. Oh, yeah. um, hey, CLH, thank you before. for the uh the super chat. Uh definitely discounting and belittling tons of experience. Yes, that Absolutely. is exactly what this crazy lady this certified parent educator is doing um is just and, and it's not just discounting and belittling it's flat out blaming the victims and that's what infuriates me more than anything else yeah it's this isn't what happened you're just mis power. misremembering or uh i would take a freaking incorrectly. polygraph yeah I'm i would sure take you a would. polygraph sign me up tomorrow once again, it would be, and, and, and Bryce and I talked about this too, Lindsay, if it were one or two people mm -hmm. coming out against Bill Gothard, still, we need to look into it. We need to, you know, Absolutely. do the research and find out what happened there. Right. Believe the victims. Right. Um, but I could sort of see how people could maybe say like, oh, well, this is, they're, they're just, you know, trying to slander Bill Gothard. There wouldn't be a documentary if it was just two people. There wouldn't be. Dozens yeah. of victims. Exactly. Dozens. Yes. Um, and more will climb out of the woodwork. There are there's many, another documentary coming out. More. Exactly. Mm -hmm. but wait, there wait. Are many I, more who have not spoken yeah. that, you know, that will someday either find their courage or be like, you know what? Look at how everyone else is being treated. I don't want to go through that. Yep. I don't want to have Holly McLean saying that my truth isn't my truth because maybe they have been so beaten up emotionally, mentally. You know that that they can't even handle the idea of someone not believing them. I know how that feels, um, and I'm so grateful I've done the work with my therapy to be mm. able to be really strong against this woman. Because I'm sure, like two or three years ago, something like this coming at me, even though she hasn't contacted me, curious. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if she had contacted me, I probably would have absolutely buckled or been yep. really heartbroken and it could have silenced yep. me yep. like her behavior right now may effectively silence other people that were abused. And how dare she? Yep. How dare she? Uh, how it's she just, it's tonight. unconscionable. Um, gross. what, what she's doing right now. Yeah. And, and gross. Uh, yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, Oh, Jessica, go forth. Hi, hey, Jessica. what is up? Jessica, go forth. The pearls used a toilet plumbing line. That's oh, what they were demonstrating. God. Right. Good God! What? Um, it's just Ugh. blows me away. Um, Jessica, do you remember a a book that came with a strap? I feel like if anyone would remember, she'd probably. Remember. It probably would be, yeah. The and and the go forths were, um, <clears throat> I, I would say, maybe maybe not, IBLP celebrities. Yeah, well, IBLP celebrities yeah, too. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Just like, um, stop it. <laughs> just like fundamental Christian celebrities, especially down here in Texas. I mean, mm -hmm, go forth. Mm -hmm. My my mom wanted me to be a go forth for sure. <laughs> or or marry one. I know that I know yeah. that vibe where yeah. like your your parents get fixated on like certain ATI families and like, why mm -hmm. can't you just be like Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Stop it. I don't know. <laughs> I, I can't, mean, help oddly, it. Oddly I can't play the piano that well. It's not my fault. <laughs> I'm not cute like he is. <laughs> Mom, I'm I'm pretty beaten down, but I'm not a pussy. I can't be like Jonathan. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Um, oh, Sue's at large. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the support. Can't tell you how much we appreciate it. Uh, and we will totally. continue. We will continue to call this kind of stuff out. To be um, fair, I have no idea who Jonathan is. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's just a name just I pulled out name. of a hat, dude. Okay, good. Just a name. It is a very <laughs> biblical name. My my, my older <laughs> brother was Jonathan. I actually got that a lot. Why can't you be more like Jonathan? I'm like, well, I'm not. I'm not oh, wow. That was a good cut now. for Chad, y'all. <laughs> Unintentionally, maybe. But good Lord. Now Chad's traumatized. There's <laughs> only 36,000. Yeah, I mean, um, we are kind of, you know, 
siblings almost anyway so oh, there you go that's true yeah you 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 get to bully chad because <laughs> <laughs> i guess he's my donkey sibling you can bully him all yeah, right. you're, you're allowed <laughs> you're allowed um you okay <laughs> so we watched we watched some of these video clips and if if that doesn't already tell you that this lady is completely off her rocker now we're going to look at some of that Go doesn't make your biscuits. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wait, wait, wait. I did want to make one quick little point with uh, I want to ask Lindsay a question because she's in the industry. She keeps referring to it as a so-called documentary. What is uh, what is quantifying a documentary, Lindsay? I, I have an idea. But do you is there like an official quantification of it? The, I you know, that's put me on the spot and I actually don't work in film very much, but I would say that a documentary is where you dig into the truths and the facts of something that has happened, a situation, a life, you know, a history of somebody or an organization, and you kind of like dig into exposing the truths about them. It doesn't even have to be exposing in a negative way. Like, here's all yeah, the great yeah. things that happened. Here's all the bad mm -hmm. things that happened. Um, and I think it's just making sure that you are integral with your journalistic approach. Yes with the documentary. So I know in our, in working with a documentary, most recently being shiny, happy people, they verify and cross check like ad nauseum. I cannot even tell you how many times we were reached back out about X, Y, Z in our interviews to make sure that <clears throat> we were, were safe in what we were saying so that like legally no one can come for you because mm -hmm. you're you're telling you know we're we're just you know pedestrians out here telling our story so they allow us to do that but then they're going to come back and cross check it like do you have a family member who can verify that this happened to you um was someone else there or like i used some different um descriptives when i was at headquarters and they pulled that out because they didn't want me to identify like the different positions I had at the time, because then it could potentially out someone I tell, I talk about in the documentary. Mm. And at first I was like, oh my gosh, they're like, they're stripping this back so much, but it's not really about stripping it back. It's about making sure that it is accurate, but also safe for the person that's telling the story. You know, I'm not, I'm not telling my story so that I can be sued. <laughs> I'm telling my story so that the truth can get out. Um, but I think it really is about the fact finding and the journalistic integrity of the production companies. And that can be tricky because some people don't have a, a straight North star that they're chasing. They're chasing more of like their bias. So yeah. if someone's chasing a bias, they're more than likely not going to do the due diligence to check both sides of things to make sure. And they, the, as far as shiny, happy people, I'm very aware that they gave everybody a chance to speak on camera. Um, I'm not going to divulge the people, but every, people within IBLP and ATI, like the, like Bill Gothard was asked if he wanted to come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? And so that, so my, that's my curiosity in her saying this so-called documentary when she has no idea how to, how to do a documentary. She's never done one before. She does not have the credentials. But is she pulling a production crew in that actually does know how to do a documentary? Because as Chad said, they seem to not, they seem to be incredibly biased themselves. So I'm sorry, but if you have a really strong bias, your documentary is not an actual documentary. Yeah. Also, you can't like, submit it into festivals. If it gets submitted no. into festivals and gets nominated, guess what? Documentary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, also, I, I think I think where where we're getting cross ways here is you know maybe we need to look at the IBLP operational definition of a documentary. You know, it's mm, like that's a great <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. that's is always there a one. <laughs> Probably There's an operational definition for everything. In IBLP. To Bill Gothard, the documentary is like the Faith Journal and the Virtue <laughs> Journal, the Knowledge Journal. As long as it brings glory to God, it's a documentary. That's. Burp. And you, can, oh, and, and you can point back that you got the glory of God through Bill Gothard and IBLP. Right. Yeah. I got All the right. glory of 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 not anyway. <laughs> it was a glory <laughs> hole. I don't know who got the glory. Oh. I mean, <laughs> don't accuse don't Lindsay of that, glory. Chad. She never. I did didn't. I didn't. That. I didn't. Okay, I'm talking about that. Okay. I'm just All right, doc, you siblings, up. keep it under control. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Don't make me get the toilet plunger line. Oh, my God, that's so funny. <laughs>
uh, the glory of my hole. Uh, it's like, no, it's just like, that, yes, this is right, exactly we're what go there. Because here's the thing: the do- <laughs> it's not about. I mean, I know we're being facetious, but it, but the documentary of Shiny Happy People was not about the glory of God. No, do you know what I mean? And that's why Holly has such a big deal with that, it. That's exactly why she has an issue with it because yes. God wasn't glorified, but mm-hmm. He was. It's just that the people that were glorifying him were not really doing a very good job of it. And they were insanely like fundy land. Well, so, you know, you kind of like the people that they asked to come and talk just, you know, I don't know. They kind of failed on that mission. In my opinion, you could say that it's bringing glory to God because it is exposing people who are not true. following the true principles hmm. of the Bible, which they claim God wrote. So Trinity, when you say principles, please stop. Principles. Saying principles. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Bryce. Princeton's uh, superintendents. But, no, but uh, I, I got you on that, Davey. I actually yeah. do agree with you. I agree with that. Uh, I mean, if you want to put it that way, but at any yeah. rate, um, CLH, thank you again for uh, the super chat. She is absolutely creating her own narrative, but I like the point that you're making here that she's doing it kind of just because she can. And I wonder how much truth there is to that just because she can. Um, I just want to get someone's, my opinion out there because I em- matter. Someone's emboldening her, though. I'm sorry, but th- mm. I just do not believe that this one individual is like, you know what? I just feel like I want to make a documentary because that felt like a hit piece. Mm. Like that, she doesn't have a southern accent, but still, the um, that this idea, like I just, I swear, there's other people that are that are behind this, that are pushing this. Uh, and you, you could absolutely be right about that. I don't have any way to verify it, but nope, I can't either. That's well, why I'm not making a documentary sure on her documentary. <laughs> well, also, like heavy and and please. <laughs> Folks, do not go watch her videos or no, do her not family anyway. Don't, but it's not. Worth but it. for the for those of us who have, so y'all don't have to. Uh, have you noticed how many like views her videos have gotten? Like nothing, and yeah. she's got nine kids. You know, mom is hungry, so you know, mom's <laughs> got to make a name for herself. There's a million mom bots out there exactly like her, putting out a whole what? bunch of stuff on Facebook and YouTube. She's got to distinguish herself, and she's hitching her wagon to Bill freaking Gothard. What if all it's her jobs were just battle. from her kids? Like she's basically just got like a, a kid <laughs> view farm. Mommy, we just, love you. Lock, lock Mommy, her kids. Angela, you can't you come out until you watch all mommy's videos at least 10 times and, and, that's gonna be... and liked them all and forwarded them and shared <laughs> you yeah, have to subscribe exactly. to so many vpns and route them through so many countries to oh yeah IP no she just sends them off to separate libraries <laughs> and she still has like oh, no. triple digit views which is nothing in youtube land is so no. whatever all right i interrupted davy who was about to pivot into the uh the 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 next big like this is oh yeah I'm, uh, we're about to my my sister's about to be angry yes Bryce's sister is about to lose her mind. Hold yeah. on to your hat, Aaron. <laughs> it's not good. Are you ready for this? Let's yeah. do it. Okay. I'm literally holding my desk. So... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's what we've got. Uh, this is from uh, Holly McLean, McLean, whatever it is, from her blog, Mommy Answer Lady, uh, which is just a creepy pseudonym anyway but let's just let's read some of this so these this is basically her explaining one of her recommended punishment methods for children and when i say children i mean toddlers this is what she's recommending this is uh this is actually from a uh i believe a blog post entitled bedtime battles if i'm not mistaken um Mm -hmm. so let's just let's just read this how to apply cover the mouth so cover the mouth is a disciplinary Uh, tactic that she recommends. Never cover the nose and mouth, of course. There should be no hindrance whatsoever to breathing. Hold your hand over their mouth, your child's mouth, and quietly say, when you are finished crying, I will let go. Be patient, calm, and kind. Do not get angry in any way. Thank you for that disclaimer. Do not allow any noise to come out of their mouth unhindered. If they struggle, hold them tightly to make sure they cannot move away. Repeat the same phrase every minute or so until they are finished. Remember, you must win. Do not give up and do not let go until they have complied. Congratulations, uh, you bullied a child. Don't you feel great about yourself right now, mommy answer lady? Uh, children children are <laughs> not horses. Okay? Breaking dogs. them is going to be insanely harmful insanely harmful i mean 
you are basically <clears throat> advocating with with you know your your legal requirements right your your legal disclaimers you know dropped in there uh you are advocating suffocating your children to stop them from crying what what now as i was mentioning to davy before we started my mother never employed this technique she would whisper in our ear for like let's say we're in church if you keep crying i'm gonna if you keep making those i'm gonna give you something to cry about yeah and if it's absolutely one. necessary, she's just like, we're going to go to a private place and you can scream all you want. <laughs> mm. Not, It rarely happened. We were pretty beat down already. We would just like, oh, yeah, <laughs> quiet. <laughs> it, it, it already broken your spirit spirit pretty uh, effectively. And, and here, here's my thing about it. I mean, as shocking as this is to visualize, right? Putting your your hand over a child's mouth like that, this is still pretty tame compared to some of the stuff that Michael and Debbie Pearl advocated for. Uh, but even so, I mean, this is, this is nuts. This is nuts. Can you imagine what that does to a child? Mm -hmm. The claustrophobia. Yes. The lack of trust, mm -hmm. the bullying, never wanting mm -hmm. to be touched by anybody because you don't know if they're coming for you or not. Yep. I was disciplined so horribly. Like I, sorry. I didn't. How dare she? Mm -hmm. How dare she advocate to take a child? Not with love. This is not love. I don't any. I don't care what any. You will never be able to tell me any different. You do not love your child if you have enough calm, unangered energy, which is never true. A parent doesn't suffocate a child. And I know she's like, oh, make sure there's air holes. They can breathe through their nose and their mouth. But don't I'm do sorry. it while you're angry. It, yeah. Go, I don't know. Go meditate for 20 minutes and then come back and you know, suffocate your child. Mm -hmm. You know, but like harness them. Shut them up. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that does to them when they go out into society when they're older? Because I do. I wasn't suffocated. I wasn't shut up with the mouth, but I was shut up with the rod on my butt. Mm -hmm. And I know what it did to me. Mm -hmm. It made me useless. I was never able to fight for myself. I was never able to speak up. Do you know what, like if someone were to cover your mouth because it gets worse, I, I don't think we've read the whole thing about this. No, we haven't. But yeah. If someone is to cover your mouth, you are no longer able to cry for help. Correct. You are no longer able to advocate for yourself. I mm -hmm. don't care the behavior. You're a fucking child. Yep. You're a child. Your energy and your emotions, as I learned from Heather Heath so beautifully, your emotions are too big for your body. Mm -hmm. so you are going to have big emotions that are going to move through you and i think you're a shitty parent if this is what you do to your kids and i know the damage that it does to people mm -hmm. and when i started reading this months ago because when this woman came out with her shiny slander crap i went and i dug in on her i wanted to know everything and i immediately went to discipline because i'm like you know what <laughs> You're a Christian woman and you're this, you know, I don't know, consortium of let me educate you on how to bring up your kids. And I'm like, there's abuse in here. I guarantee it. There it and is. And then when I found this, I was so upset for days. I was upset. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, this is even worse than I actually imagined it would be. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's horrifying. And especially when you think about Lindsay, what that does to you later in life, what mm -hmm. you carry with you like you were saying, into your adolescence and your adulthood. Yep. This does not go away. This is this is imprinted. Yeah. Um, and in spite and, of what she says, because she's always saying, like, a child should learn to harness their emotions. Like, child, children don't understand. They will panic. They won't understand yeah. what's going on. Yes. Why can't they breathe? And if, I don't know about you guys, but I have seen kids cry and be so distressed like genuinely distressed not crying because they're angry and yeah. not crying because they're not giving them the, but distressed and then they throw up they're so distressed and screaming <sighs> and they don't understand they throw up imagine if you're having your mouth covered this, yeah. this, I this, like this i awful. i suffer from a bit of claustrophobia and i don't know actually where it comes from i'm sure this is somewhere insidiously in my life where it has but i just i can only imagine being the strong-willed child Thanks, Dobson, you know, for being this strong willed child where you're like, I don't understand and I'm upset. 
I, I was that way so much with ATI in the beginning because I'm like, none of it makes sense. I can't even put two of it together to make it like actually make something that I understand. Yeah. And so then I would push back. But then I was seeing as rebellious, like go prepare for mm -hmm. discipline. You don't know what's coming mm -hmm. or go pick your discipline item. Yeah, you got to go and yeah. pick what you got hit with. Just you want to make switch? it even better. You want a paddle? Yeah. You want a belt? Which one you want, you know? Yeah, exactly. Go and pick your poison. Yep. My um, sister went from being called an independent child to a, uh, uh, what was the term you just used, Lindsay? Rebellious? Strong-willed no, strong child. Strong -willed child strong -willed, yeah. And then rebellious. And then yeah. once mm -hmm. my mother hit on rebellion, that was it. Any form Did of disobedience release was you into the wild rebellion. Yep. Yeah. That's like, what I got all I, the time. Rebellious and prideful. Hate, those two. Oh yeah. When go you, ahead, Chad, please. But was that when you hit teens that you became the rebellious and prideful or were you single? Maybe digit? that's it. I don't, it's hard to say. Cause I feel like so, once you hit like 12, 13, that's when they're like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to rebellion, rebellion on you now. 13, yeah. 14. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chatty go. Yeah. So I, I want to point out what she said at the very end there where you have to win. Okay. Yes. This is something that I grew up with, you know, just from day one. And this mm -hmm. is something my dad sincerely believed. My dad was an independent fundamental Baptist preacher. And before and after we got an API, he would preach this from the pulpit. He said that children are natural liars because of their sin nature. He said, babies will cry for literally no reason. They'll be fed. They'll be uh, changed and everything. And they'll still cry. And they'll immediately shut up when you pick them up. And so that proves that their sin natures are manipulating you and, you know, because they're sinful liars by nature. She says the same thing in her, and I don't know if y'all have shots of that, but in some of her other writings and in some of her videos, she talks about children crying and babies crying to ma manipulate, saying that, mm -hmm. you know, you need to determine whether or not a baby is crying because of needs or wants right. and check off the needs in your heads. And, and if you've That's attended exactly. their needs, they just want something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Babies do That's not have the capacity funny. for that. Babies have one way of communicating, and <gasps> that is to yell and get the parents' attention. Mm -hmm. It blew my mind when I, as an adult, started going to therapy, and I learned, hey, children and even adults into their mid-20s do not have fully developed brains. Yeah. Your brain develops from a very early age and has mm -hmm. stages that we can measure that we know what's going on to a pretty good degree and that we can pretty much pinpoint what needs to happen. That blew my mind because I was taught we came into this world already knowing how to manipulate, how to be little masterminds, and we were expected to be fully grown adults by the time we were 13. Y'all remember, especially if you were men, you know, your teenagerhood was a mess, so you had to be a man by the time you were 13 and yep. be fully ready to make decisions and stuff. So this whole concept of children being these things that have to be tamed, that have fully functioning faculties and everything, it is the same between IBLP, between the whole Dobson era that preceded it and still goes on to this day, I would argue, and whatever this lady is pushing out. It has this adversarial view of children as these little mm -hmm. monsters that need to be tamed and brought into submission. It is Demonizes sick. children. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is sick. Demonizes them. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and you're right. I, I mean, she did, she, she does the blanket training stuff. She does talk later on about like how, well, if they're crying for a good reason, then this, if they're actually sad or in pain that you shouldn't do this cover the mouth thing. And is, you get to decide as the, as the adult. Well, yeah, of course, Lindsay, you're like, the authority. Like I, uh, the you're the ultimate arbiter of truth. You are so, your child's first bu bully and abuser. Are you yeah. so proud to put that badge on yourself? Good luck. Your kids will not care about you when they are finally free of you. No, no. They'll be so God. happy to be rid of you. Um, I just want to say really quick, if I can, just to mm -hmm. everybody in the, oh, in yeah, the comments, yeah. I just like looked over a minute ago and I was like, oh my, oh my gosh, like, thank you. You guys are all like so wonderful and sweet. I just wanted to acknowledge that because I, you know, I just got all emotional so thank you everybody by the way we can put this whole theory of it's hard to not the test. to we can just get some of those uh those buttons with words that they teach dogs and cats to use and see if your two-year-old toddler beep, can figure out, beep, figure beep. It out. Yeah, that's a hungry <laughs> hungry outside Stop off mad, mad, mad make sure you mad, include mom, if you're doing mad. this kind of training make sure you include no, a hate hit. you button hate no hit no hit no hit ow ow stop it's ow stop stop stop
Nine one one. Nine one one. What's the what's that dog name? Bunny the dog. CPS. CPS. Uh, okay, so this next little right, piece baby. here, when they're quiet and have stopped crying in response to your statement, remove your hand and calmly ask if they are finished. When they indicate they are, calmly tell them crying and fussing is inappropriate and you are glad they've decided they are finished. Let them know you love them and hope they decide not to repeat this behavior again. Go back to whatever you were doing as if all is well. <laughs> like No. Are you, it, leave it up for a second. Like, are you, oh, I'm going are to. you kidding me? Yeah. That you're 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 glad they've decided to finish, but calmly ask them, are they finished? How passive aggressive are you? Yeah, are you done now? You just abused them. Yeah. Do you think they're gonna be like, no, I think I need to cry a little more? Mm -hmm. Like, nope, you have silenced them. Good mm -hmm. for you, you yep. big bully. You have yeah. silenced your kids, and guess what? You've also done. You have broken the trust bond. It is done. Mm -hmm. That child is never going to feel the same way about you. And I do not care if she's like, oh, neither of my children love me. Um, yeah, I polygraph those kids. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. smothered your kids, I swear you don't want them polygraphed. Yeah, you don't want to go. You don't want to go in a nursing home either. Trust me. <laughs> That's where you're going to end up. Mm hmm uh i i mean th th this whole thing is just th like this is ridiculous um but, you know asking your toddler if they're finished like you said Lindsay, it's so passive aggressive but also right. once again the 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 trauma response that that is instilling for when they are older yeah uh, i mean your can, kid can you... is gonna like probably disassociate <laughs> during this too i have that mm -hmm. and yep. potentially not even remember half of it and may not for a really long time, but then not understand why they can't have certain relationships, why yep. they can't get intimate, why they get, you know, again, like I said, I have mild claustrophobia and there's a lot of different things in my intimate relationships that this shit follows me there. You can you know? absolutely I, trace it back. Yes. Oh, 100%. gosh, absolutely. My therapist, I'm telling you, she was so, she was amazing. She hung in there with me, but we did EMDR on this kind of stuff. And I was just I was blown away at how almost everything, when it came to the physicality of my issues, came back to spanking and discipline. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, then you're gonna love this part. Uh, Can't so, wait. continuing on, uh, do not comfort them in their disobedience. Do not rub their back, cuddle with them, or otherwise show affection. This is not the time for them to feel acceptance, but a time for them to learn to behave. Do not allow them to kick or resist. If they do, get them in a position where this is not possible and wait. Be patient, kind, calm, and not in any way angry. If they need to breathe through their mouth, lift your hand slightly each time they need to take in a breath, just enough for them to take it. Put it back immediately. Repeat as necessary. Do not hinder breathing in any way. Except the part where you're covering their freaking mouth. Yes. Also, that part where it says, um, this is not a time for them to feel acceptance, but a time for them to learn to behave. <laughs> if you look through this woman's like entire article series or her video series or whatever, notice how everything is pointed at how the parent is, or is parent focused, how to get your mm -hmm. kids to behave, yes. how to deal with whiny children. Yes. This is stuff that the parents are feeling about their kids. Mm -hmm. And it is all about not, not raising kids, you know, to be happy, healthy, successful, navigate their feelings, learn coping mechanisms, you know, things that, parents are supposed to teach your kids it's about dealing with the problem that is annoying the parent yes and what like seriously the more i look at this the more i think i didn't think that anyone could be less qualified than gothard to tell you how to raise kids but this woman is in <laughs> a dead heat with them she's her, challenging the first the first place <laughs> her whole thing is basically just like how to how to turn your kids into a broken dog into a robot you know? no into uh, a I compliant mean, robot yeah, I ju it just. <laughs> but it's for their godly souls, Davy. People like this it's should so not be they're... allowed to have children. You know, I just thought of a and very yet they, interesting. They populate a lot more. Go ahead. A Brian. very yeah. interesting. Uh, if you want to see what this looks like, watch the sound of music. Ooh. Watch the, the sound Damn. of music because at the very beginning, they're little freaking soldiers and they don't know how to play or enjoy life or have personalities and by the end of the movie they do mm, that's a good one Bryce 
right? It just popped in. Is that beginning. another one you watch at the, at the Oklahoma City Training Center, like ad nauseum? <laughs> no, I, I watch it every Friday night. I just I cry. Oh, okay. and I cry. Yeah. I sing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good movie. Come on, I'm a movie guy. No, it is. It is. It's a great movie. And <laughs> I was that lonely guy. Julia Roberts in that, right? No, not Julia Roberts. Good Lord. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what was it? Wow. Andrews. <laughs> Julia Andrews. Andrews. Thank you. <laughs> it is a little bit of a horror movie, though. I mean, come on. I was homeschooled. I don't know movies, okay? <laughs> Julie Andrews, the Julie singer. Andrews, sorry. Song I will say one. I will say one thing about that movie. On a lighter note, the fact that they are singing about what a problem this woman is on her wedding march, like that, is like the ultimate <laughs> passive aggressive Netflix. Okay, yeah. like this and <laughs> hilarious. Uh, oh, they had to get their last little digs in. <laughs> um. Okay. So this is this is you know continuing on a little bit here. So she she had talked about how sometimes you might need to do this the the cover the mouth tactic. Mm -hmm. Uh, for 45 minutes to an hour. What the hell? Yeah. yeah Holy. No, this, this could continue for 45 minutes to an hour where you have to continue to smother your child, basically waterboard them with your hand. Uh, you have a very, you have a very strong willed child who has been allowed to manipulate you and get his way. Remember, this is a training session. It is establishing that you are in charge and they are not allowed to behave this way. Don't give up. Once you win this first session, once again, Chad, the winning uh, you know, comparing this to a battle, all you will need to do is be consistent. Each and every time they start to fuss for the reasons stated here, apply the hand. Keep it there until they are finished. The time for this to work will be greatly reduced quickly if you are mm. consistent. And soon, soon you will only put your hand up or mention that you will cover their mouth if they cannot control themselves and they will comply. They will learn self-control. There's that comply word. No, I was it's waiting not for that one. That is not about no. self-control at all. No. Fear. Yes. Fear. Terror. Mm -hmm. You have won as the bully and the abuser. Congratulations, Holly. Glad you're telling everybody how to do this to their children. Can we also go back to the other screen? You don't have to flip back to it, but where she says, yeah. get them in a position where they cannot kick or resist. Yeah. What exactly is that that you are suggesting because this feels very Trumpy to me where you're like, you know what? Maybe if you do this, but like, I didn't advocate that they sit on their kids. I didn't say they should put them in some swaddling blankets and then, you know, just put their hand over their mouth and fully keep them down. What does that mean? Yeah. It's this position where this is not possible and wait. Yeah. Dude, people, my brothers used to do this shit to me just to get to me. You know, like, this is what you do as kids where you're just tussling and trying to, like, you know, yeah. wrangle someone and give them a strawberry or something, like, in a playful, tussly way. Not like my parent is literally trying to break me down to a completely raw form where I no longer have myself. Yeah. I just fear the repercussions of anything. And I guarantee you, in every Christian home, this is what made me the most angry as a kid. The goalpost moves constantly because yep. it is dependent upon their emotional state mm -hmm. as the parent. If my parents went to an IBLP seminar and they came back, trust me, the next three months, we were going to be completely like just shredded on our little behind knees because they were going to be like, we have to be very strict and we need to have like the most perfect IBLP children of all time. Mm -hmm. But then it'll lax and loosen up a little bit. Or if they dad had a bad day at work, Oh, you know, that wasn't, he would walk in with that energy and you just knew this isn't going to go well. Yeah. We're all about um, to get, yeah. No. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I mean, who yeah. who said homeschooling kids didn't have like the full school experience? We even had bullies. Unfortunately, yeah. they were our teachers. <laughs> and you know, uh, it, interestingly, I I wanted to you know comment on the the analogy that you used there, Lindsay. Where you know, yeah, you you get pinned down, you, you know, tussling or wrestling with you know friends, siblings, whatever. Yeah. The difference here is this is a toddler that is having a moment, a very emotional moment that can't yeah. defend itself at all. Can you imagine someone getting angry? Like you get, I don't know, you you know, a little kiddo, like let's say like six years old, gets yeah. angry because someone takes a toy, yeah. right? Like, ah, that's mine. I wanted to play with it. You don't quite know yet. You're like, wait a minute, it's not fair. I had my 10 minutes at this toy and now you took it. And then all of a sudden the mom has no idea what's going on, but here's you wailing as like the strong willed child. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden she just like comes over and like, I don't know, like, pummels you to the ground you know and yep. you're just like arms down legs on you and just like holding you as you're like 
And now and, you're terrified. And for an adult, you can't... <laughs> think about like a normal sized adult and like Shaquille O'Neal doing this to you. <laughs> it, you know, yeah, you're gonna freak out. You're gonna freak out more. Um, okay, it's just so all of these parents that that like the pearls and even the Duggars and you know little Miss Holly McLean herself. You need to have someone do this to you, mm -hmm. like full force, like yes. you said. Like it's good show Shaquille O'Neal in here, Holly, uh -huh. and let you feel how this feels. Where you think you're done with your attitude, and then you're going to be <clears throat> gaslit when you're done. Yep. Good luck with that. I want to see what happens to you. Anyone from WWE? Thank you, yeah, thank you, Bryce. Uh, this Even more swoggle. Was... <laughs> <laughs> wow! Well, I want Ric Flair to do it to me. Um, the, this method is not to be applied for thought. appropriate crying. If a child is truly hurt or is sad at the loss of a pet or friend or some other real and legitimate reason to be upset, it is okay <clears throat> to allow them to express their sorrow. But loud, manipulative dramatically excessive or angry crying and fussing such as often heard in public by children who are not trained is not appropriate and should be stopped immediately. Does she do so this in go. public? Does she do this in public? Does she smother her child in public? So interestingly <laughs> enough, Lindsay, yes, but, but she, she specifies that you probably shouldn't be doing this in front of other people and no doing it really quickly. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I said, Chad. I was like, oh, you mean because it's crazy and abusive and insane and people are going to look if at you I... doing this to your kid and think that that parent is suffocating their child. If any parent did this in front of me at a piggly wiggly or a shop and save hell, yes, I'm calling CPS immediately. You You're done. Yeah. You're done. Your kid is not yours anymore. You've got Good. to be kidding me. I mean, the the what could happen in a situation like this with a parent doing this to their child? Mm -hmm. I, you I could mean, accidentally kill your child. Exactly. Thank you, Lindsay. Yes, you could I mean, either. If your anger is enough mm -hmm. and you're being the one, like she's like, you know, if they have this attitude or whatever. So it's up to your judgment. Yes. We've seen it. We've How seen do you know? They've the seen pearls. children, that, you know, they find kids starved to death, locked in cages. There's the people up on the West Coast a couple of years ago where the girl finally escaped and got the mm -hmm. cops yeah. to show up. And they're like, oh, there's 11 kids in here and they're chained to their beds mm -hmm. and they are yep. not yeah. eating. But the fridge is full yeah. of food. But that's mommy and daddy's food. It's like, whole, yes, people take it to the stream and it, and it absolutely can happen. It's like, I forget who, maybe it was Lindsay that said, like, if you see a bunch of kids and they're all perfect angels, you should be worried. Yeah. Yeah, That's such yeah. A I feel point. it. I do. When I see a slightly bigger family, you know, outside of like three kids, I just I kind of keep an eye. I don't know. I don't want to be that person, but I'm just like, I uh, do they it's have a, a little bit sword. like a oh, mommy, like nah. yeah. And I'm like, what okay, what's going on? <laughs> Thankfully, I haven't seen like kids in skirts and you know, dressed like they're going to Wednesday night church <laughs> in a really long Lindsay's time. Lindsay's reverse maybe. profiling large families. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it's also That's because so I funny. lived in New York City. Now I live in Los Angeles. You know, I'm kind of keeping myself away from the you know the bible belt because it's too triggering but um i just i yeah i care i care and i'm really worried because i know how difficult it is to be a child mm -hmm. that can't speak out and yet yeah. you're out in the world going well there's a cop over there could i tell that police officer you don't know how many times i thought about that kind of stuff mm. you know well and, and I, I mean I having someone? been through it you don't want anyone else to experience that nightmare that you went through <clears throat> If um, I had this, had a hero call CPS from a Walmart, I would have been right? like, sweet God, there is one. <laughs> Hell, I threatened to call him myself when I was a kid. And <laughs> really? Well, you can imagine the response that got. Some of my relatives still joke about it. Yikes. Did you threaten it? Like verbally threaten yep. you were going to do it? Oh, Chad. Yeah. Yeah, but oh, someone at a uh, someone at a funeral not too long ago, a family funeral, uh, told me, "Hey, you remember that time you threatened to call CPS on your parents? Boy, when they were done with you!" And I was like, "Ha ha ha! This is terrifying." Oh right? my god! Why are you bringing this up at a funeral? <laughs> <You're> <laughs> that, um, I, I mean, we we've all been through, you know, some version of this. I mean, obviously, Lindsay's was probably the most extreme. Um, you know, my parents and were, yeah, and Chad, Chad too. Um, you know, my parents were relatively reason. I mean, they definitely use corporal punishment, but not to the Michael and Debbie Pearl extent, not like what this lady is talking about. I mean, yeah, just nuts. Um, but this is, this is where this next part 
where mm -hmm. Holly is talking about how to discipline your children is th this is the part. I, I mean, mm -hmm. where do people come up with this stuff? I don't know. So she says this is this is about spanking, right? For older children, in the rare case of a spanking being necessary, I find that a smooth, flexible windshield wiper was the most effective tool. Believe me, one swat with it on the back of a thigh or buttock will whip a child into shape quick. It would not be appropriate to spank over and over again. A swat or two is all it will take if you use a windshield wiper. If you accidentally strike yourself with this tool, believe me, you will know what I mean. It hurts. It doesn't leave any kind of damage, but it stings like the dickens. Uh, okay, hang on. Point of order here. Based on this, what, uh, what I just realized, in that part at the bottom where she's admitting that she's accidentally hit herself, the only way you can accidentally hit yourself doing this is if you are doing it in anger. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you're mm -hmm. calm, cool, and collected, it's like I'm just give this kid a couple of pops, no big deal. Mm -hmm. How are you gonna miss? That's a great point, Bryce. Oh no, you're great furious, point. and you're not uh -huh. just hitting him once. Nobody uses mm -hmm. the windshield wiper just to do two swats. Okay, mm -hmm. that's it is interesting as you say that, Bryce, be, or because she does say if you accidentally strike yourself with this tool, comma, believe me, you will know what I mean because they're so flexible and bouncy. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. The, what I can remember because it only happened maybe twice that I had a belt used on me, like literally maybe mm. only twice. Uh, and the, yeah. the belt is not good. <laughs> the belt is always bad. And it was also rare, but it was like, I think it was my dad. Only my dad used the belt on me, but it was very rare because um, mom just took care of it immediately <laughs> you know what this really tells me here a fl the, the fact that she's recommending a windshield wiper either she was just trying everything she could get her hands on to see what hurt the most maybe someone's out there doing this just experimenting with different types of whips essentially you're whipping your child at this point it's cheaper like, to are, use are, a, uh, a wire hanger savages still like what is happening that you are you've experimented so much that you finally found the windshield wiper is the most effective tool we tried curtain rods we've tried dowel rods we've tried wire hangers we've tried belts we've tried, we've tried everything sticks, we've tried dowels yeah. we've tried wooden spoons we've my, tried hair brushes i mean my dad fr from the pulpit actually did lead a study one time on different implements and their pluses and their minuses including oh my god including oh my god. the kinds of marks left and stuff like that and the potential for injury if you missed like you know this is something that a lot of fundamentalist churches and of course you know iblp conferences would go over also, I, the fact that she referenced the Dickens at the end makes me think of A Tale of Two Cities, and a guillotine sounds pretty good right about now. There you go. <laughs> right, right. Chad, uh, you, you just, you just got. I just got a horrible uh, parallel. When your dad did that, that's the equivalent of a very, very messed up video game RPG when you're trying to decide which weapon <laughs> to take on your journey. <laughs> or tabletop RPG, even Ex better. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You can have oh, flavor no. to it. Now, now we've now we've really <laughs> gone into nerd territory. Yeah. Now we really I'm, have done it. <laughs> we're even beyond me. I don't know. Who wants to play Settlers of Catan after this? <laughs> I got 12 oh, windshield wipers. Mordor. <laughs> 12 windshield. Okay, so on a slightly lighter note, okay, because I, I know this has been extremely heavily heavy, but I was I was reading some of these uh some of these excerpts uh to a friend of mine, um, female friend of mine, and her comment was this sounds fun as an adult, like maybe a little <laughs> adult role play here. Kinky oh. kinky. <laughs> If you don't have this as a trauma in your past, it yeah, could be true. really yeah, true. Good, point. Good point. The safe she word like, is CPS. Yeah. <laughs> Holly McLean. She was, she was, she was like, wait, you're going to hold me until I can't move? I'm interested. No, no. Holly's, <laughs> Holly's safe word is Hans Gruber. Hans Gruber. Hans Gruber. You're going to whip me on the thigh? <laughs> Oh my god, I can't. You're gonna whip me on the thigh oh. with a windshield wiper? Sounds hot. <laughs> and then slap yourself on accident? Mommy. <laughs> Let's whip each other with windshield wipers, Chad. You know, I gotta, I gotta oh, say, what? we gotta stop. My sister is in the <laughs> that, chat. Can we... That sounds like. Oh, your a sister's in the chat. What is the that's answer, like mommy? A <laughs> <laughs> that's like a drunk, 
like a drunk game go and hit each other with windshield wipers yeah just the most <laughs> fucked up <laughs> <laughs> sorry my kitty probably felt that i was crying he does oh, this God. like he'll come and give me oh uh, more emotional support kitty that's crazy cats don't have feelings it's wild yes um, he does <laughs> Shut up, Davey. I thought we could be really good friends, but now I don't know. I know with the cat. Lindsay, thing, Davey's been through some personal trauma in his life. So it's were really you mauled by a cat? Yeah, cat related trauma. Okay. All right. I have a friend that has also been cat trauma. So I, get I actually it. haven't been through any. You no, know, if you accidentally hit yourself with a cat, it's uh, pretty rough, you know? Like, <laughs> oh, I just, uh, that breaks in it, you know, this, this whole, uh, you know, ideology that that holly yeah. mclean is pursuing because that's really what it is right these are not it disciplinary is. tactics this is not parent education this is an ideology this is a, a an ideology that was used to brain brainwash thousands and thousands millions potentially of people uh yeah. over the years that iblp was active and successful and by the way making 60 million dollars a year in the early 2000s in case you don't think there was any kind of monetary incentive for this kind of stuff you can correct me on that number <laughs> right. if i'm wrong chad um but but it yeah, was in the this, millions uh, i just you know all profit this whole yeah. ideology yeah. is just so damaging so dangerous um and the fact that there are still people out there <laughs> promoting this stuff and not not only promoting their own idea like whatever like if if this is what you, i disagree strongly with it and i will fight you on it if this is what you are promoting uh but at the end of the day it's your prerogative what you want to promote but they're not just promoting this kind of stuff they are also like we said at the beginning here questioning the experience challenging the experiences of others um who yeah. have been through all of this that Holly hasn't even been through. She hasn't yeah. even been through this stuff. And she thinks she has the right to have an opinion. She doesn't. She does not. She's hitching her ride to the wrong horse. Yeah. Um, I could just address her and directly because, again, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead, Chad. I want to hear this. Yeah, if I could address her directly, because I know she's probably going to watch this and everything. Hey, Holly, uh, it's me. You may remember me. You blocked me on Twitter, X, whatever we're calling it now. Um, so you may think that you're doing something special here, and you may think you're the one person that's standing up for IBLP and standing up for what's true and what's right. And hey, it puts a little in your pocket too, right? The thing is, you're not special. You're not the first person who's tried this. You're not the first person who's going to try and fail at this. You're not the first person who's taken their iPhone 10 or whatever and sat down with it and tried to make a reason response to all these people who are misunderstanding what's actually going on here. The thing is, you are a grifter to the level of Bill Gothard. Actually, I take that back. You're not even to that level. You're a wannabe. Mm -hmm. You heard a basic seminar one time. You think you have all this figured out, and you think you know the Bible and Scripture more than those of us who literally memorized entire chunks of it as part of our schooling. You think that your thoughts and your dogma overrides our personal lived experiences. I cannot tell you how more wrong you can be. There is still time if you turn around and go back to making your videos that no one watches and no one cares about, all this goes away, we'll stop talking about you. But if you persist in discrediting people who have endured abuse and who are making their stories known to try to bring down this abuse once and for all to make sure that no other child goes through it, you're not going to stop. Some of us, you're going to get to know our faces a lot because you're going to be hearing a lot about it. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, <sighs> you have just, sorry, you have taken by your own scriptures, taken a dog by the ears that you know nothing about. This was never your fight. This was never your chance to butt in. No matter what cooperation you're getting from Alfred and Bill Gothard, I will tell you, the moment you stop being useful to them, they will leave you in the dust. Hmm. And you will realize once and for all, when all is settled, that it was not worth it. None of this is worth any time or effort you're putting into it. You're changing nothing. You're hurting everyone. 
And if you persist in this, everyone who ever said I love you was wrong. We're done. I wish I had an applause sound effect, Chad. Phenomenal. Um, thank you. Thank you for that statement. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, the, nope. I tried not to monologue, Don't even but apologize. at that point, you never apologize for it's that. It's amazing, yeah. Chad. Fair. And it's so true. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's so true. Everything Feel free to post a, a response, Holly. Feel free. <laughs> and you can still come on. She'll you make can a, still come make on another this podcast. Documentary. And we won't be as flippant. We'll treat you professionally. I won't but even let Chad or Lindsay is... on the episode, and we'll do it as a live stream. Uh, he won't so jump you with us. Edit it. You know, I like I, I will make I will take every precaution to make sure that there is no way that anyone, including you, can say that I manipulated any video or edited anything out to make you mm -hmm. seem bad. You can do that on your own. And those Promise. clips that I edited for our other, like all I did was take. There's nothing cut in the you middle didn't edit of those clips. Them. I was like, I yeah. took it from you know here to here just just to keep things tight. Same thing with the screenshots from her blog. Right. It's but you guys literally right. screenshotted. She can literally go and look at her own video and know, and anyone else in the chat can go and do their journalistic due diligence and see that you didn't edit or augment the video. You but just please don't go watch any share. of her bullshit. Yeah, don't don't give we it a don't clicks, need but any it's more not really views them anyway. or engagement on that than it already has. So please just avoid any of her channels, her social media, her blogs, any of it. Just and don't avoid retaliate. all of it. And, and definitely, yeah, definitely don't retaliate. That's just stick job. with the I'm people kidding. that tell you what you want to hear. You know what I mean? Stick with Lynch the people who are telling you. The chat. <laughs> well, you oh have God, no God, idea. His <laughs> world domination is his goal. <laughs> yes. Right. What are we going to do tonight, Brain? <laughs> Thing we do every night, Pinky. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's for my sister. She All right. Mary. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, I mean, this um, th this whole thing, uh, you know, Holly spewing this absolute vile nonsense, because that's exactly what it is, just vile nonsense. The intentional um, twisting and manipulation of facts and narratives. Um the intentional ignorance, even that we talked about so much in the first episode, Bryce. I mean, this stuff is so intentionally ignorant, and you can call it delusional. Um, you can maybe she's a little bit brainwashed, uh, but I guarantee, I guarantee she's one of those. We know these cult moms all too well that they were the ones driving the decisions, driving the narrative, driving the family behavior. And I guarantee she's one of those. So I don't really think she's brainwashed, I just think she's absolutely delusional and intentionally ignorant she's an this, alpha mom this yeah. stuff speaks to mothers the mothers want their children to be well behaved in public all the time they want to be able to say look at how great my kids are they they want to protect their children from the world they yep. want to do all these things and this empowers them mm -hmm. one of the, the things with this lady and like so this is something i discovered of myself way down the line after several failed relationships you know, I'm always, I always say, I'm like, oh, I'm open communication. I'm totally open communication. But I also avoid confrontation at almost any cost because my mother was very confrontational and she could flip everything on you. And so as an adult in a, in a tense situation, if somebody is making accusations or saying I did this and that or whatever, and I just stand there and I don't say anything. And my mother used to be like, are you, do you hear me? And, and it's like, yeah, I hear you. I'm trying to think of a response that you're not going to twist and throw back in mm -hmm. my face. So yep. instead I'm just going to sit here and not say anything because it's not worth it. It's and not worth the argument. I, yeah, exactly. I will get out right. of this faster. Yep. If, if you think I'm disrespecting you by pretending I can't hear you. So I'm not, I can hear you. I'm just, I've just, I, I'm like Doctor Strange, okay? I've just gone through a million scenarios, but I didn't find the one where I come out on top. So let's just skip it. Just you know what makes me happen. really sad hearing that is that it's still a conditioned response is what mm -hmm. this is. It's yep. still a conditioned response to someone who has an assertive attitude to you towards us because i do the same thing especially like i hate when i feel this in my career if i have a, like a really a-hole photographer who's like blah, 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 you know i'm just like 
just freeze, freeze for mm-hmm. a second. And it'll, it'll all somehow you'll figure it out because your fight is so strong and I'm scared of my own fight. So I'm just like, I don't know what that's going to look like. That's going to look like the Tasmanian devil came and ripped your face off. <laughs> like, so I, we got to control that. But I, I think what, with all of the discipline and with all of the, the, the constant, like coming at us with their, you know, their defenses that we can never actually have one, even as a grown adult, we can't have our own thoughts. We still in my, as 40, at 45, like I still can't have my own autonomy with my parents. And it's just like this, this whole conditioning. It's like, at what, at what point do we all say enough is enough? And here's my point of view, mom, I'm out the door. Yeah. I don't have to endure you. Mm-hmm. What, what says we have to endure them? You know, what says we have to endure them? Holly McLean, Bill yep. Gothard, IBLP, mm-hmm. Tim Lewandowski, everyone else who's continuing to perpetuate IBLP and its materials and all of the things that are going on journey to the heart that's still continuing to indoctrinate and condition young children, young teens, and take their fragile, unformed minds. Like Jazz said earlier, like you got until 25 to mold the clay of these minds and indoctrinate them and condition them to a certain way. And then here we all are in our 30s and 40s going, wow, I just, you know, I freeze up or I don't want to do this or I'm afraid of this. Like, I wonder where that comes from. Mm -hmm. You know, just fucking love your kids for fuck's sake. (laughs) Sorry, YouTube. Just love your kids. You're fine. Love your kids. If you start out your day with I love them no matter what. You will not suffocate them. You will not hit them with wiper, windshield wipers. You will manage. You will deal. You will have conversations or you'll get help. Not from the Holly McLeans of the world, but actual therapists that are licensed in this world. If your child is actually not able to function because maybe there's an actual bigger problem. Yes. And you're making it far worse. Yes, Far there could work. be cognitive Behavioral disabilities, problems, anything. mental yeah. problems, you know, functional problems. Yep. And all you're doing is going, guys, just trying to like use me as a tool to get my kid to submit. I, like, I wasn't even going to go there, Lindsay, but you're a hundred percent right about that because you know, I've, I've, I've got, uh, I've got a nephew that's like that mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. he, he has high anxiety. And if yeah. he were disciplined this way, he would be an absolute mess, a shell of a human being. And it makes me want to cry thinking about that because Absolutely. someone that got someone like this bitch got her hands on my nephew. I mean, it, it would destroy him. Yeah. Uh, it would shape him in just, a way that he would have such a hard time coming back from. Yeah. 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 Um, I, so, I've seen it. Yeah. I've sat there and my nephew, who's very smart, and watched my mother make accusations and assumptions because a child obviously did something on purpose and not because they're just a child and watch my poor nephew try to defend himself with words, Mm -hmm. you know, and my mother brings it up to this day (laughs) about how he needs to apologize it's, just just like, it's, it's fascinating crazy. to me. Like, do parents, like Christian parents, I'm going to say Christian parents very specifically, do they forget what it was like to be a child? Yeah. Like, first of all, you have kids when you're like, I don't know, in your 20s. Let's talk about the fundies, right? Like, when you're in yeah. your 20s, you get married, boom, 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 have kids. It's like, do you forget what it was like to just be an idiot? <laughs> like to literally just not know shit and be super emotional and not quite understand things and then you're getting hit and then things are happening and just like what like i don't understand why parents think like let's just do what our parents did because that clearly worked for us like do you i did not have children for a reason i was so afraid of perpetuating this into my own kids sorry we have a we have a fabulous I'm gifter. Just, this is so much <laughs> yes. truth right here. Say it, yes. read it. I haven't read it Constantly. yet. Constantly. This is what happens when taught to put all your worth into your kids. It leads to needing to control them because they are a direct reflection of the parents in their mind. That is so 100%. on point. DLH, hell so yes. So on point. Yes. Uh, and when you when you have the pressure of a religious system 
like yep. IBLP and everyone's looking at each other. It's like FOMO almost like parental FOMO. Like, yep. oh, I've got to keep disciplining my kids because I want them to be as good as the Joneses or the Duggars or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like that was one of the most damaging things with TLC, putting the Duggars on TV is yeah. so many Christians were like, well, I don't know why I, my kids aren't like that. And then and it's it's like the moms watching like <laughs> like reading a romance novel. <laughs> I'm going to go total Bill Gothard right now because I think it's absolute bullshit. But, you know, you know, you you romanticize this idea of your children being perfect. Mm -hmm. And then if they aren't perfect, you're a shitty parent. Right. Have you, Are you kidding me? Yeah. Do you know how many moms I have seen in a grocery store where their kid is just like, you know, inverting like an alligator doing the alligator roll? <laughs> <laughs> and I will just literally <laughs> walk by and be like, bless you. <laughs> yeah. Do you need me? Do you want me to grab the, the broccoli? Like I yeah. will, like, I don't like kids. I um, did not have them, but I, I mean, like, I get it. You are, it feels like the soul of Satan or Dennis the Menace has crawled into your child. But you know what? You don't need to demonize your kid. Like yeah. he's just got some issues. Figure it out with him. Sit him down. Don't ignore him. Don't hurt him. Try to understand what's going on with your kid. And let's also what? not forget what was happening behind the scenes with the Duggar family. This yeah. perfect so family that everyone so idolized. Mm -hmm. was going through the most horrific abuse imaginable behind yeah. the scenes. I, I mean, let's not forget that. Uh, so no, all of Holly McLean's so-called documentary, the principles were good. You just can't apply them to the extreme. That's what that led. That's what those principles, that's what that ideology led to. And no, I'm not saying there aren't evil people out there that are going to be evil regardless of how they were right. raised. Right. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not saying that I, I understand there are psychopaths, um, it, you know, but in this instance, um, I, I think. But based on teaching alone. Diet. Yeah. Yeah. And based on teaching alone, there really shouldn't be psychopaths in Christianity. Right. Theoretically, sociopaths yeah. and psychopaths like, shouldn't even exist. They, they shouldn't be there in Christianity. And also, that's probably just a demon making them do that. And they need to be exercised. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, it, I'm sorry. I, I think just, you were going to say oh, something. Yeah. Oh, I'm just thinking that the whole uh, spanking your children thing, I don't know if it's just an American thing. I don't know if it's something that is prevalent around the world. Um, but in America, I realized it's romanticized. Oh, we lost her. Um, okay. It's romanticized this whole because you think about look, think of all the comedians that talk about and make light of how they were spanked and you know moving forward that 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 everybody needs to spank their children you know this yeah. is the way and i just want to say you know what guess what not spanking your children it's freaking hard that's it's true the harder path that it's is very true. very hard yeah. mm -hmm. and if you can if you do it that just means you really do love your kids you want to understand them you want them to understand that hitting somebody's not an answer yeah. You know, and so, and I, used and, to and by the way, that is no, well, and, and for, for me personally, that's no judgment on, on parents that do choose to, you know, spank, uh, just because I disagree with it. Um, I, I know, and I've seen spanking done in, in an effective way that doesn't harm your, your child. Um, but the more I, I look into this, the less I can agree with that sort of, of discipline. I just, you know, well, and, uh, and also way like, more damage than not. Yeah. And, and also like, you know, studies have been done on the long term effects of, you know, of, of spanking and, you know, physical punishment and abuse. And, you know, and even in light cases and everything, there are still, you know, more often than not uh, issues that show up down the road. And, yeah. you know, I, I've, I've heard it before too, like the way my dad used to justify what he did to me and, you know, I would speak to the point where I could no longer register an emotional response. Yeah. And that was the goal. And, you know, my dad justified it to me saying, well, you see, if it had been my dad, you know, he wouldn't have done it with as much love as I, as I have. He would just grab mm -hmm. whatever was available and just start wailing away. And I'm just like, that's not a comfort, you know, yeah, that doesn't make it right. It, it, it you don't, and it, it, it feels like almost, this idea that, you know, the, the people who say that, well, you know, I went through it, so it can't be as bad for my kid. It feels almost like trying to validate their own abuse by doing it differently, mm -hmm. but still maintaining the same 
impetus behind it, and it just doesn't work. We you know, all like heard it. it. And, and, by, and by the way, you know, and, and this is something I was thinking about earlier today, you know, say what you will about scripture and everything, that there is nothing in scripture, you know, objectively that tells you how to raise your kids. They don't even like cover germ theory in the Bible and everything. There's a couple of there's a couple of verses about the rod and stuff like that, which a lot of people are happy to base their child rearing on. There's a couple of verses about, you know, throwing rocks at your kids if they get to uppity. But when it comes to like the very basics and what we know now, this is one of those things where I feel like, you know, we should take, you know, even if you are a believer in everything, please understand we know a lot more now about the human brain and human development than we did back then. Maybe you should look at these things that we as human beings have been able to achieve and make better decisions than people did in, in the Iron Age. Just Chad evolved. is saying society has evolved past spanking at this yes. point. It doesn't need hey, to exist anymore. There's, there's no an, reason for it. Um, there's a huge story called the prodigal son. How do you think that would have worked out with any of our parents if we came crawling back after spending the inheritance and being debauchery right. and we come back to our parents? Do you think they would have hugged us and welcomed us with open arms? I mean, theoretically, they should have if they were asking. They what would still you haven't, do? so no. Oh. But yeah, yeah, as Lindsay can attest to, as Bryce can attest Wait, to. Wait, they gave you their, your your dad name? can attest nice. to. Yeah, you know. Um, nope. it, My dad's it, also it, dead, so that's kind of weird. <laughs> well, that does make it a little bit different, but still, uh, I, love that <laughs> I love pull that one out. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know about your your dad. <laughs> no, no, it's cool. It's cool. Like that, that, seriously, dead dad jokes are like the thing that keep me going now. <laughs> like I break it it's out, constant. and everybody's like, it's like, constant. You can, you can laugh. It's fine. It's hilarious. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if Chad's I, I, laughing, you can laugh. I think you're absolutely right, Chad. I I don't want to, I, I don't want to shame anyone yeah. that Fair. that does use spanking as a disciplinary method. But at the same time, maybe it's time to to take another look at that. Maybe it's time it's to stop, uh, stop. Or, or stop. Yeah, and once, exactly. And once you don't learn take, better, like, do better. Take a look yeah. at it, but stop first. Stop yeah. today. If you're hearing this and you spank your kids, stop. I implore you, as someone who is spanked from the age of eight to fifteen or sixteen years old. Please stop hitting your kid. You will never, ever know <laughs> what they have to fight and get through. You mm. will never, you won't. My parents had did not know until I was about 44 years old when I wrote them victim impact statements. They did not understand. And they still are in defense and denial of the way that they raised me. And uh, again, no one can tell me any different. I have my therapist. I have a physician who literally had a, a long conversation with me about this to help me prescribe mm -hmm. a medication that could help with my anxiety because I literally have so much anxiety around physical contact with human beings. It cracks me up that I do makeup and hair for a living because I touch everybody else, <laughs> but they don't touch me. Yeah, yeah get but it's a big <laughs> difference. I'm, yeah. I'm putting the energy to people. They're not putting their energy to me. And right. it's very, very different. But- Stop, stop disciplining your kids this way. First of all, take discipline out of your vernacular. You don't discipline children. You raise them. You nurture them. Can they stop being these willful, weird rocks that you have to chisel into a diamond and like put the power of God into them and beat them and chisel them until they're carved out into exactly what you want them to be? Like put the seeds of your children in the ground and water them and put sunshine on them and love them and let them grow. I don't care if you were hit as a kid. I mean, I do. I'm sorry. That really sucks. And you shouldn't have had that either, but you should now take those bad experiences you had as a parent or as a child and go, I will not do that with mine mm -hmm. because I honestly think that spanking, hitting, suffocating, stifling, you know, toppling your child, harnessing them down where they can't move that's the easy cowardly way to raise that, yep. your kid that's exactly that what is Price so said, easy yeah. you are mm -hmm. giving into anger you are giving into your rage you are giving into your disgust you are giving into your own shame of not being able to get your kid to the path that they need to be so like no i'm sorry but for you the, the three of you can we panel this for a second <laughs> did your parents ever did your parents ever say you know hold on a second. I need to go and become not angry. I'll be right back. Did your Maybe parents once. ever do that at any point? Maybe once. I can't remember because okay. I've disassociated well, from a lot of that. There was, there was one, there <laughs> well, was one there instance. Go. There was one instance uh -huh. 
where I was indeed terrified and I ran. Mm -hmm. I had a what's called a loft bed, which is very yeah. difficult for my mother to get into. And I went all the way up there and all the way to the back corner and she couldn't reach me. And she mm -hmm. had a realization that her child was absolutely Scared. terrified. Mm -hmm. And she she went back into her bedroom for a while and cried or something. I don't know. But I was just like, yeah, her shame <laughs> showed up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Briefly. Yeah. But they, they always compare to how they, oh, you guys are lucky. My mom would get me up at yeah. 6 a.m. and make us scrub the baseboards. And I don't care. I don't care. Go get a, go get a therapist. Blah, 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 blah. No. Get a oh, therapist. Lindsay, Shut up and get I was a therapist. So close. So close to convincing my mother to get a therapist. And then she, wow. and she did a 180 and she's oh. like, you know, my the lord is my therapist and yeah i, I love the that lord one. love oh, that honey. One. and i was yeah. like I have one well better. that's very um that allows you to just just you know do whatever Drop you want Mike. and and yep. you can just Drop uh Mike. you can interpret that however that you want that's exactly. the permission granted yep. well i, mm -hmm. I in perpetuity raise my child right, oh you mean you have I a cosign now great that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> my Good my mom decided to go to therapy for two sessions realized that the therapist was Jewish and tried to convert said therapist and said that she couldn't continue going any longer because Jewish. It got to be a Christian. Yeah. Bomb. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was like, okay, well, um, Bonkers. have fun with your life. <laughs> Bonkers. What am I going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah. Um, it's insane. You know, Davey, thank you so much for letting us have this conversation. Um, oh, it's, Thank y'all. But like your platform, your like, oh, look, there's another kitty. I don't <laughs> kitty buffs. It's okay. You don't have to love it, Davey. I will. <laughs> I love all animals. Does it have Lindsay, a I just ball? don't like that. No, it's like don't. parents don't just like I love you, but I don't like you right now. You know? Uh, <laughs> have a Groot. I love all cats, but <laughs> you have <laughs> a Groot. Yeah, just, just as a Groot. <laughs> I just have coffee. That's, that's what do you my got, pet. Davey? Oh, Nothing, oh, no, nothing. no cuddle bug in there at all. No, no, no stuffy toy. No, nothing. I travel too much. Just the guitar and the exit sign. Yeah, guitars. I have guitars, other, you know, things that uh, I enjoy. Davey would Davey's have like, a I'm dog the cuddly if, character. If, <laughs> Davey would have a dog if he wanted to raise anything, but he doesn't That's even own a house plant. Yeah, I, oh, okay. I, I, I well, don't. It's probably I, I had a cactus one time that like died because I didn't <laughs> take care of it properly. Oh, yeah. I just, he didn't I water it like much. every six months. I know. And it still, it still left me. Unbelievable. Everything I love leaves me. Don't give this guy kids. It's All not right. going to work out. Oh, Lord, no. I've got my <laughs> my nephews and knees. I, I'm good on that. Um, it's good that they're, they, they, they thrive high. with a parent and you can just be the fun uncle. The funkle. <laughs> the funkle. That's a weird way to say it. I don't like that at all. Yeah. I'm a funky fuzzy uncle. uncle. I'm a fuzzy uncle. That's, what I That's also to. weird. Those are all weird the things to say. The fun uncle. Funkle. Yeah. Oh, I know what you meant, but it just... <laughs> you're like no it just sounds creepy and i already have to you it's know like avoid a dance the creepy, the funky the uncle creepy dance uncle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the but funky no uncle dance. thank y'all for being willing to talk about this stuff Lindsay. thank you for last minute joining us this has been i mean having you on here has been amazing chad i, I mean no, the the mic drop moment that that you had um i just i can't thank y'all enough uh, for speaking, probably see in court later. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I need uh, a character honestly, witness. I, I'm so. I would love to hear what Ollie has to say. Bring oh, it. I would too. I, I just don't think she. I want to um, hear what she thinks. I would love. For but her but, to but if she cries, we'll have to cover her mouth up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she might like that. We don't know. We don't know for sure. <laughs> All yeah. I'm going to try some of this stuff later on on myself, though. But I'm going to try it on myself. <laughs> on yourself. Well, yeah. she also does advocate. She does advocate for the child to do it to themselves. Yes. The smothering. Yeah. The, they'll, Although they'll, she says cover. What learn. is it? CMT? Yeah. Cover mouth something? Cover over CMT mouth. CMT or CTM? C-O-M? Cover the mouth. C-T-M. No, it, it's not that. Oh, no, 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 don't, don't say that. Don't I say was that. like, it's kind of, I'm like, it's not that. I was like, it's C-T-M. Cover the mouth. Cover the mouth. <laughs> I can't. Ooh. That's for the after show. So, like, but she she actually talks about the kids doing it I as well. like, coming under Like, you're going to do Covering this. under like, mouth. Stop, Jesus Christ. Stop it, I'm stopping. Baby. I'm done. I'm done. Behave yourself. <laughs> Cover up mouth. <laughs> 
but like for the kid to do it to themselves. So again, yeah. you're you're falling into that conditioning again where you self police yeah. yourself to yeah. never speak out, to yeah. never talk, to never act up. And like I learned in therapy, anger and acting out is actually a positive thing because when you are angry, it means that something has has come against you. And anger and, and rage activate a response. Yeah. That's what it's for, to mm -hmm. activate you into engagement, into doing something. I'm not saying rage and anger is like healthy and great for you to do all the time. Right. But there are moments where it is actually healthy and necessary to be angry about something. Like I am very angry at Holly McLean right now for what she thinks she's doing, but more so, more so than shiny slander. I don't give a shit about shiny slander. It's her teachings. Yeah. I am more enraged about the fact that she is okay with child abuse and she's teaching Christian women to abuse their children. Yeah. That's my problem with you, Holly. The rest of it, I see you. I know what you are. I know yeah. your worth. I know your value in my life and it is zero. But mm -hmm. I also think that, you know, when you go off in the stratosphere of this, like some romanticized idea that you're going to like pick up the mantle for Bill Gothard, it's still going to matter zero to me because mm -hmm. my goal and my path in my life is to shut down IBLP along with my docu sibling, Chad, obviously Bryce and Davey too. Like we will rejoice <laughs> when this ends. Absolutely. And also when Holly McLean stops teaching people to abuse their children, like thanks for becoming another person on our radar that we need to make sure never, never validates another person to harm a child. And I think, um, you know, the, the more that we can expose this stuff, the better. I mean, we have to, we, mm -hmm. we are morally obligated. I almost feel like, uh, to have these Agreed. kind of conversations because, if 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 people like Holly and there's this whole new wave of fundy Christians coming out, right? We've seen it. We all know about it. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to repeat history and damage another generation of children. Uh, and we just we, we can't in good conscience uh, allow that. Um, and so we will have conversations like this occasionally and uh, it'll be super serious and We'll try to make it as entertaining and, and comedic as possible at times. But at the end of the day, some of this stuff really is a big deal. And it's it's an emotional thing as well. But um, I really appreciate all y'all being here. I dropped, uh, I put all the the social handles in the uh, the description. Uh, but Lindsay, can you uh, can you go ahead and give your your profiles? Sure. Yeah, mine is The Cult Chronicles. Um, you can find me on TikTok and Instagram. And if you care about what I do for a job that I rushed home from to be able to do this, <laughs> you can follow me at Crazy Pretty. And if you care about my cat, you can follow him at Little Lord Mumford. That we do not allow. You're welcome. That we don't allow that. We don't allow tagging <laughs> the cat. No. You might not, but people can look at it right away right now and go follow him. Uh, the, the frustrating thing is I know most of the people watching this, that's going to be the first place they go is to your cat's profile. <laughs> yeah, who cares about my makeup? Go to the cat. Unbelievable. Uh, also, Lindsay, I love it if you could treasure. introduce me. If you could introduce me to some of your models, uh, that would be great, Lindsay. Um <laughs> <laughs> okay well the problem she is you live in not, Texas no, so like hey, you not. need to be out here I, I, I technically have modeled for her in the past so I hi, travel a lot Lindsay just advocated for preventing trauma to children <laughs> she's not introducing you to I'm not the, that true. kid I'm talking about adult models they're Christ, still pretty good young <laughs> uh, uh, Chad me, most your of social you want to partner with anyway <laughs> If you see the name Arch Radish around anywhere, mostly TikTok, but I'm other places too. If you see Arch Radish or a variation of it, that's probably me. I'm on Reddit. I'm on Instagram. Uh, it's Chad Harris mixed up. That's the easiest way to remember it uh, because I gave you a puzzle. Yay. We love it. I saw Arch Radish carved into the bathroom stall just two days ago. It was crazy. <laughs> I, yeah, it was crazy. It was at Bucky's. It was I saw for a good time call Arch Radish. <laughs> The words of the prophets are written on the suburb walls <laughs> and tenement halls. I'm going to schools and I want to write on Sharpie Mark. <laughs> For a shiny happy time, call Arch Radish. <laughs> For a fun time with windshield wipers, call Arch Radish. <laughs> Arch Radish's dad is dead. Oh okay, God. I dropped it again. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit.
Uh, hey, laugh, uh, Bryce, I know I know you don't typically pr uh, plug your socials, but we do have plug uh, it, Bryce, the merch it. website. Yes. Friendswithdavy.com, a.k.a. CustomerServiceSurvivor.com. Go so take a look at yeah. the merch. If you have somebody in tech support, a friend, a family member, don't get, have you tried turning it off and on again, merch. That's cute, but it's Lame. decades Cliche. old. It's minute, yeah. yeah. So check out my t-shirt idea, which yes. I literally just made for myself and for others like me that says, all I want for Christmas is for you to remember your password and for the love of God. <laughs> That cannot be more true. <laughs> it's so true. It's so accurate. <laughs> I hear about it all the time from Bryce. Uh, by the way, by the way, do you, I have a family member. You know who never remembers their password? My dad. Anyway. <laughs> Stop it! Enough! Enough! Dude. Oh. With you, Chad. <laughs> so morbid. That is so morbid and so Look, funny. Write your so passwords simple. down and put them in a folder in your file cabinet and call it colonoscopy pictures. They're safe. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> or are they? No one would want uh, that. Really um, point, Davey, yeah. really quick in the comments, someone said, as a Christian and a mandatory reporter in my state, because I work with our youth, how the hell has no one called CPS on her bum? Is she in a mandatory reporting state? Ooh. She's Great question. In the South. I would encourage you to look into that, Draken. That's a good question. And um, Mutterall, Draken, look into it. I think we might look into it as well. That's a really, really good question. There you go. Yeah. Draken. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Um, but thank you all in the chat so much uh, for hanging out with us, for talking with us. Uh, all the super chats. Can't tell you how much I appreciate it. It's, it's less about um the money that you're sending and just that it it helps drive up engagement so please like comment mm -hmm. subscribe share this with your friends um and we will see you all next week uh with a brand new episode who knows what we'll be doing next week bryce i don't even know uh but I'll we'll be, be back juggling. next week yeah uh, bryce will be juggling love that love it love it Wait, love it i'll um, tune in for that i'll be whipping myself with a windshield wiper oh. so tune in next week <laughs> For I'm gonna send time. somebody over to do that. I will be, <laughs> I will be covering up my own mouth, Chad, and uh, whipping myself into oblivion. <laughs> Hang on, I'm ordering Thank something so for you right now. Just in we time for you. Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it in front of my family. This is what you did. <laughs> Oh my PR god! We, that, yeah, we. I gotta. I gotta end this before we go any further off the road. Yeah, we, we love y'all. Go. Good night. <laughs>